Looks like we got some people di dialing in already. Excellent. This is off to a good start. And I thought I'd be nice and surprised uh, in, in the background there. <laughs> Oh, I need to work out how to like increase font. Oh, there we go. I can increase font size in uh, <laughs> in the, the Twitch chat here in uh, OBS. Look at all this stuff that I'm learning for once. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that, that was one of the great ones that uh, Jack sent me from Build last week. I got a whole collection of uh, outtake photos, but I think that one he actually chucked into the Flickr stream that he went, uh, that he published. I'm like, oh, thanks, Jack. It's... Uh, so kind of you. <laughs> uh. hmm. I wonder if you can actually like increase the font size of that. No, I think I can only zoom in. Well, that's somewhat annoying. Uh. Let's get rid of that background. We'll go to, go to my stock Simpsons one. Uh, anyone that's, uh, uh, that knows me knows that I'm, I'm a bit of a Simpsons fan. With uh, oh, Look at how that bleeds out on the, uh, on the background detection. I can get my forearm to not even det detect it as part of uh, something that's in there. But yeah, there we go. Step away from that. Lovely customized Simpsons back, uh, background uh, I got done last year of our family. It's a good bit of fun. All right. Well, uh, it is. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, my wife got it done for Father's Day. Uh, so it's got uh, two kids. Um, and I think we can see all the. Let me, let me just see. I'm pretty sure everything's coming through. Yeah. Is the, uh, we've got a cat and they've got the. So the cat's on the couch with us. Um, and I'm standing right in front of the, uh, the Homer car that um, he des designs. And I've got to have that one in there, uh, being a pal. Uh, you know, the fact that her pal was running that company and uh, you know, just got to represent for, for that in, uh, in the picture as well. But yeah, I think it's also... Uh, no, it's not hidden. It's just hidden on my screen. All good. Oh, I'm going to kick off because uh, you're not here to... Like talk shit for you know, however long. Um, so uh, anyone that watched Build might have seen me do a whole bunch of copy and paste of stuff from um, an existing application that I'd done. Like for, like, it was supposed to be like a live coding thing, but I had thirty minutes and there was no way I was going to be coding it in thirty minutes. Um, so I had uh, just kind of copy and paste it. But I want to actually do it live and talk a bit about uh, some of the stuff that goes in there and how we can build for uh, a new platform that we put into preview called the Azure Static Web Apps. Um, but it, like, really, it's just a it's just a web app. Like, um, so I, I did, again, cheat, because no one wants to watch NPM install run for like 30 or 40 minutes while it's downloading half the bloody internet. So I, I've already set up the project. It's, um, it's basically just create React app um, and Azure Functions. So that's, uh, that's the root. And then I've got Azure Functions here in an API folder. Um, just got... You know, the, the standard stuff it brings in, like React, React DOM, the scripts, just the npm start, um, and all the like, all the stuff that you just get out of React DOM, uh, sorry, uh, out of Create React App. And then again, Azure Functions is just the same. It's um, I just, the only thing I've done differently with Azure Functions. Is something I always do with it is I always install the functions tools locally, um, so I can just use like npx or I create an npm script to to start them rather than having it um, installed globally, which is what's in our documentation. I don't actually think that that's the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, like, I just don't like having things globally installed. I like doing just a, a clone down of a repo and being able to, to run everything after you install the dependencies. I don't like having to then go and install global dependencies because that can trash other stuff that you got there. Um, yeah, it's a good point. I, I can do uh, like set up cache with Yarn. I've just never been a Yarn fan. Like, it just feels like another tool that I've got to add for the sake of adding it. I, um, maybe I've just never worked on something big enough. 
um, or complex enough with the dependency structure that Yarn, I can see that, that Yarn will give me the value over the top of um, just straight up NPM. But yeah, like the, that's that's one way. Um, I have something like like the Azure Function Core Tools is actually quite a big download as well because we've got the it's like a .NET component that sits behind the scenes um, to run everything. Uh, so yeah, it just it's a bit tedious, but I said I prefer to have everything just in the repo, um, and yeah, scaffold up some stuff beforehand. You know, you, you, like I said, you don't need to, to see all that boring stuff. Um, so it's just npm start. We're gonna fire these up. Um, uh, pop another terminal over here, and then oh, come back to you in a minute. Where my terminal go? Oh. Just realized it probably was not on the right screen. I think you were just watching me um, rather than uh, which one do we want? That's the one I want. Sweet. Kill off some of this stuff. <laughs> uh, well, too bad, Amy. You've uh, you've seen me do the boring stuff before, so uh, you just you, you get to skip some of the magic. Uh, so, so the reason I didn't know that I'd um, I'd not fl flip the screen is um, I've got OBS on the other screen and decided that well I don't need to watch myself on OBS so I just was like I've hidden that um, so so I've got no idea what you're all seeing at the other end um, I should probably just fire up Twitch on my little uh, there we go I've got Twitch on the other laptop there we go yay now I can see that you're actually seeing the screen uh, and I'm gonna get rid of the background. Doom. We do magic. Look at that. I'm now transparent. Yay! And we can see the like like the minuscule bit of code that would have been hidden by the background. Fantastic. <laughs> now how do I block people from uh, chatting? I think I can do that for, for Amy. Uh sweet, there we go. Well that's uh that's that thing set up. And then let's go to the API folder and npm start on that one. Ah, no, I should probably actually do an npm install on that one. Hey, you do get to watch some of the boring stuff happening. Yay! Ooh, that's gonna... Wait, why didn't it already install? Hmm, we'll find out. npm start. Oh, wait, no, I, I bet, yeah, it hasn't actually installed TypeScript as a dependency. Like, why would it not have done that? So, uh, no, it's there. Whatever. Let's just uh, um, RF node modules. When in doubt, just nuke your node modules folder. Isn't that right? Uh, cool. npm install, and we'll see what. Oh, actually, it's a different version of TypeScript than I'm using in the web. I think. Yeah, that's carrot three seven five. Uh, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. That was the thing that I didn't want, is just like downloading Azure Function Core Tools. Oh, that will take a while. But yay, create React app. I, I can codes. There we go. Um, I thought it was in dev dependencies. Yeah. I didn't do a production install, I don't think. Um, and that, like that's where TypeScript should be. It's not something that you'd... I don't know why functions is in dev dependencies. That should be a normal dependency. Uh, Templates there. That's what they're for. Anyway, uh, type, oh, TypeScript's a dependency in the other. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but because it's two separate package JSON files, and I'm, um, it shouldn't make any difference. I'm um, like, but yeah, nested package JSONs get weird. Uh, someone's gonna say yarn again, aren't they? Uh, let's do npm start. And then when this does, yeah, look at that, it doesn't work. Oh, wait, huh, I should actually read the error message. Yeah, why is it not working? It's because I don't have any files yet. Like, you would have thought I had done codings before. Uh, npx func new, that's better. And we want uh, HTTP trigger. And we'll call this GraphQL. So um, I'm, basically what I'm trying to build is a trivia app um, where uh, you play a trivia game. Um, there's, a, there's a free API called Open Trivia API that I find great for just 
doing little demos and stuff like that. Um, and you know, then you can just pull in your um, questions. Like, I don't actually have to be smart enough to write tri enough cr trivia questions to challenge people. So yeah, we'll do that and we'll create that GraphQL endpoint. There we go, all the GraphQL Azure functions, it's there. Sweet, npm start, and then they should be up and running. Ta-da! You know, what's funny is um, I think every time I've uh, done this demo, I think when I did it, uh, when I was building it, I hit that same error. Um, I practiced setting up the repo yesterday. I hit that same error. In one of these days I'll learn. But yeah, yeah it's, the, it's the fun of live dev. You can see that this is live, that I'm not actually uh, trying to, to do it any other way. Um, cool. Uh, we're going to install. So um, I won't worry about the web bit yet. Like, yeah, web endpoints are pretty boring. We'll start with the, the API. Uh, so I need to come into here again. Oh, oops, to the API folder. And I am going to install a couple of dependencies, npm i-d, uh, that will be Apollo, Apollo Boost, no, Apollo Server Azure Functions, and GraphQL Import, and Axios. I think that's what I want. Yep. Cool. Um, so for the GraphQL Server, I'm going to use Apollo, um, because Apollo has uh, integration into Azure Functions, which makes it super easy to get started. Um, and then we've got um, GraphQL import, because I like GraphQL stuff. I prefer writing in... Um, Yes, I am stalling at the moment because it's npm install and I've that one's annoying me, so it's going to kill. Um, uh, yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, and yeah, I, I use just .graphql files rather than like trying. I don't like GraphQL inline in the JavaScript. Do them in separate GraphQL files um, and then use GraphQL import to bring them in to um, to Apollo. I, I find it weird that Apollo doesn't support just saying like, here's a GraphQL file, like read that. You've got to import it. Um, I guess they don't want to ship the dependencies to do GraphQL import or like, oh, parsing that file into whatnot. Yeah, whatever. Um, cool. Uh, don't want that anymore. And it's time to write some GraphQL code. Uh, first up, just going to do dollars return here because um, because you've got the GraphQL Playground available um, from uh, Apollo Server, uh, and that you have to return the Azure function through the return value rather than the output as an argument, um, which uh, it defaults to. Uh, and that's because the, the, the way that um, Apollo expects it to be done, which is fine. Just change that to dollars return in the function.json, and then we're going to go. Uh, let's go schema.graphql, boom. Um, all right, so what do we need then in terms of like data structures for a trivia app? Like if we think about it, well, we're gonna have like the game itself. Um, so like we're probably gonna have some kind of simple game state set up. Um, so let's, let's start with like, you know, like what state the game is. So we'll do that as an enum. Uh, we'll call that game state. And then we can have waiting for players. Because um, like the when no one's in the game, there's no uh, detect for that. Uh, we'll do started and completed. Uh, just some basic state there. Um, but then, what kind of types? So we're gonna need obviously like types to represent this. So do type game, and it'll have an ID, which could be ID bang. Um, well, we'll need state, we'll call that game state. Uh, players, yeah, well, I suppose we're gonna need players. Um, I will make that array of players. Uh, so we're gonna need a players type and we'll make that not so we'll make it a not null array and the argument and the values of the array, array can't be null because it would make sense to have null players inside of the game um cool uh well we're probably gonna need some questions question and again that can just be a not null array um anything else 
I don't think we need anything else on the game state. Uh, so let's go type player. I can have an ID of ID bang. Wait, do I need bang on ID or is ID implicitly not null? Uh, I think you need a bang. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with you need a bang. Uh, and someone can correct me if uh, uh, that's not right. Uh, so we're going to have a name and we'll have the answers that they have submitted. So we're going to need an answer type. And that could be a not null array. Um, so like you create a new player for each game. It's not like reusable accounts. I'm not doing auth or anything like that. All right, so we go uh, type answer. It's gonna have these, they're not, no, because we're probably never gonna get these by ID, um, but they'll need the submitted answer. Well, let's just call it answer. That could be a string. And we'll have the question and that can be a question. Bang. Uh, so now let's do our type question. So this is, uh, what is it? it's open, triv uh, open, not open silver. Uh, open silver is an open source implementation of Silverlight, which I don't know why anyone would ever want to do that, but you can do it. Um, uh, yay. That's what the other one was in there. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is open, um, open trivia database. Uh, I can go boom, generate an API URL. We'll go control C and look at that. See, like we get this JSON payload of um, trivia questions. And like I said, it's, I, I find this quite nifty in terms of um, no, no J Robbio, no Silverlight. It's called Blazor these days. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, like uh, this is this is a great one for demos. Um, I, I I'm not gonna like make it so complex that you can select the category and the difficulty or anything like that. Um, uh, we'll just make it so we'll just do like tech questions, science computers. Um, we'll make them hard, and we'll do multiple choice only. Gee, yeah, that'll be cool. Um, there we go. Sweet. Um, yeah, so like, uh, we'll unpack this data payload in the um, in the back end, and uh, yeah, like we don't care about the the type or the difficulty properties. Um, we'll care about the uh, we don't really care about the category because, like I said, it's just a stock category. Um, it's really just the question, the correct and incorrect answers. Like that's the only thing that's of proper relevance to us. Um, so that's all we'll we'll worry about there. Um, so, uh, and to answer Amy's question, Silverlight's, Silverlight's dead. There's no need to worry about Silverlight anymore. Uh, what do we want? We want an ID on question, and we want a question, which will be a string. Uh, we want the correct and, and, uh, uh, thir. there we go. I can type, that'll be a string, and then we will have the uh, incorrect answers, or they will just do answers. So here's all the answers, and that can be a string, bang, array, bang. Ta-da, okay. Um, I think that's our game state. Cool. That's looking all good. Um, I look, I am obviously referring to my notes. I'm not just trying to remember how to do this. I've read the code once, and, and then I just pushed it out of my brain with beer. Um, okay, so we're gonna need our schema. Uh, and we will have a query called query. So these will be the like the things that you can query with. Um, uh, oh, does Virgin Australia? I, I don't know. Like, is Virgin Australia still a thing? Is that is that why you you're worried about the Amy and like they use Silverlight? <laughs> I, I I don't fly VA. Uh, <laughs> all those points so useful um so let's just do quiz by id which will be id id bang and then that will return a quiz <laughs> uh no quiz with a capital wait game query uh game where uh 
Yep, so game, 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 game. Um, just as like a debugging endpoint, we'll do games, which will return an array of game. Bang, bang. Uh, mm, no, it could re no, it's always going to return an empty array. I don't like returning nulls. Nulls are horrible. Um, isn't that what Tiger is for, to keep Qantas in check? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably all we need at the moment. To get started, sweet. So let's come over to our Azure function. <laughs> Ooh, pretty is erroring. Why is pretty erroring? Have I not installed? Enum. Because I can't spell enum, that's why. Enum. There. Yeah. Cool. Uh, no, prettier is still erroring. Game. Ah, uh, because, yeah. Yeah, so with GraphQL, if you're not taking arguments, you don't need to provide the parentheses. There we go. You know how I knew that prettier must have been erroring before I even looked at the little um, indicator down here? Is because it should be too indents, not for. Um, I think my I think I've got VS Code configured to uh, be uh, for indent as the default, um, but then I run prettier for because like if I'm doing .NET and stuff like that, I uh, prefer the for indent. But then if I'm doing JavaScript um, stuff, I have uh, prettier installed, so the prettier plugin kicks in, which is a two indent um, default. Yeah. We should all just use tabs. Um, okay, so let's just delete all that because we don't need the default um, Azure Function template. Instead, I'm going to um, import the Apollo, Apollo, Apollo server from Apollo Server GraphQL. Uh, so this is the thing that we're going to stand up and return back from. Uh, we're going to import uh, import schema from GraphQL import. Um, so this will take that schema file that we're just building um, and convert it into a JavaScript representation of the GraphQL schema, which is what we'll need for um, uh, sending down in the response to um, Apollo. Uh, cool, uh, we're gonna const serv server equals new Apollo server. Uh, this will take some arguments. We'll have a look at those at the moment. And then we do uh, export default server.create handler. So that's how we will um, expose the uh, Apollo server out to um, our endpoints. Now, oh, actually, the other thing I need to do is um, because they, because these are running locally on two different ports. Um, wow, that's a... That's a stretch of a joke. I'm appalled you said tabs. Oh, the dad humor is here today. Host, um, is it host like that? I always forget how to do this. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to Google that, aren't I? Uh, host, I think it is, and there we go. Cause star. Um, so with Azure Functions, like cause is blocked by default. Um, and, and I'm gonna need port and cause because the functions are exposed on localhost 7071 and the web application is on localhost uh, 3000. So um, so I'm gonna need calls to, to comment between them and I'm pretty sure that's how we set up calls in Azure Functions. It, when it doesn't work, we'll then Google. Uh, that's what I tend to do. Uh, okay, cool. So for, for the Apollo server, um, uh, I'm obviously doing this with TypeScript and I can do F12 and I can have a look at all the information of what I need to pass in. Um, so the type defs, that's actually where we pass the um, stuff for from like GraphQL import. And the other thing that's gonna then be relevant is the resolvers. So the resolvers are the things that are gonna handle our queries and mutations. Um, if we were doing subscriptions, it would handle subscriptions and stuff like that in GraphQL. Um, another thing that is uh, potentially of interest is the playground property, and you can use that to, um, to enable or disable the playground. So you, you probably want to disable the pl playground for production. So but we'll do that a touch later. So let's start with type defs, and then we'll use import schema dot slash uh, graph, what, what is it? Yeah, graphql slash schema dot graph ql so it's a path relative to the function's root not to where this uh, it's not relative to this file so um so from like the api folder up 
So where, where NPM start will be running from, essentially. And then resolvers, well, we are going to have to do something there. Uh, and then playground, we could do uh, enabled, uh, just, uh, actually no, it's playground, it's whether it is um, process.env dot node env equals development. So um, we'll just pass in a Boolean representing whether it's in development because we only want the playground in dev mode. Uh, now, obviously that's not gonna compile. So we need to create some resolvers. Let's go new file, we go resolvers.ts and then we will export default and an empty object. And then we can import resolvers from resolvers. Is that how we spell? Yeah, it could be how we spell resolvers. And we do resolvers there. All right, sweet. Um, now you probably need to actually look like something proper. Uh, so we can come in and set that up. Actually, let's be fancy and use like, you know, modern JavaScript and not even have to do like the property names. Ooh. Um, okay, so back to resolvers. And here we're going, um, just to like implement a basic bit of type safety, import um, iResolver from Apollo server. Uh, resolvers, yes, resolvers. Uh, yeah, so we need that. And then we're going to, um, actually let's go const resolvers equal, uh, as an iResolvers equals the empty object, and then we'll export default resolvers. Yeah, that'll do. Cool, done, save. GraphQL written, fantastic. Thanks everyone, no. <laughs> um, okay, so so here's where like, we, so if we have a look, let's just do this up to the side. Um, on the resolvers, uh, so the resolvers is kind of what's taking care of this schema stuff here. So we're gonna have a query, query um, this type. So we need to find what that type is going to be. So query that will have um, two properties on it. One is called game and that will take an ID, which is, oh, that, that will take some arguments and then we're going to have games, which will take some arguments. Sweet. Um, yeah. But I probably want, I want, I want this to be sort of type safe relevant, relative to what is in the schema there. Um, there's a bunch of tools that can like generate um, TypeScript types from GraphQL schemas. Um, they're a real pain to set up. Um, I'm still trying to learn how to effectively do that. So I'm not gonna do that now. Instead, we will just create a new file called, uh, we'll call that types.ts. And inside of here, we're gonna go type game, and that will have uh, an ID which is string, uh, equals that. ID of string, I uh, will have a state of game state, so I'm gonna to have to create that enum in a moment. Uh, players, which will be a players array, and questions, which will be a questions, a question array. Um, hey, I just realized they're called player and that's, that should be player. Okay, and then we're gonna export, oops, export that. And we're gonna export type uh, enum game state. And that was waiting for players. And started and complete. Let's put some semicolons, so com commas around. Uh, there we go, export type player equals uh, ID of str string, uh, name of string and answers of answers or answer array. Uh, so we're gonna need to go export type answer, which is answer as a string and oh, come on question as a question 
Oh, is it, there's more dumb jokes uh, from the Max Solution to the Max Solutions. Uh, I can't think of any dumb jokes. Do you mind opening the file structure explorer? Ah, yeah, sure. Um, just there, uh, there on the left hand side. Um, that better? I'm going to assume that you can thumbs up because I can't. Uh, Excellent, cool. Um, yeah, the, uh, I was just collapsing it down to maximize screen real estate, but cool. Uh, if you want to, like, let me know if there's stuff that you can't see or um, isn't in focus. Actually, you know what I could do? Live share. Do, 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 do. Um, let's go. How do, I, how do I start a start a collaboration session? Oh, there is a like. Start a read. Start a read only. I don't trust you folk on the uh, Twitch stuff. Um, sign in with Microsoft. Let's pick an account. Any account. Uh, probably shouldn't actually use that one. Um, cancel. Let's use a different account. Yeah, that didn't work. Cancel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go live share. Sign in with that. Uh, no, the reason I'm not using my Microsoft account is that it's actually, uh, I already have a live share account set up against my, um, personal. So it's better if I just stick with everything, um, on the personal account. And the VS Code Insiders is linked through with my personal account. Um, cool. So once that's signed in, I'll paste this into the chat. Um, or you mean, why don't I trust you with, um, Copy again. Oops. Cool. Why don't I trust you with a, making it read right? Because I know you, Amy. Um, so you, yeah, I don't, I don't trust you with it. Uh, cool. So that, that's up and running. So let's see if anyone can jump in on live share. Um, that's the live share, isn't it? Yeah. Sweet. Um, this will be an experiment, won't it? Uh, anyway, I'm gonna just keep uh, creating types. Uh, question. Oops, I'm gonna keep creating a type, type, boop. I, I'm feeling justified in it, even if you are offended, Amy, because I think it's the truth. <laughs> Would you be opening up a live share so that I could uh, edit yours as well? Um, and the next stream that you do? Yes, no, uh, Amy, Amy? <laughs> Ring array, cool. That's that. Um, or is that all our types? I think that's all our types. Do, 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 do. Yeah. All right, so now I come back to the resolver and let's import game from resolvers. Oh, no, types. Yeah. Um, so this is gonna return a game this is going to return a game array. Sweet. Um, so they're both arraying out now because it, it's like, well, you haven't actually given me anything to return, which is what is expected. Um, and games yeah, is going to be a game array. So I'm actually just going to create a um, empty array. Like we're just going to store the games in there for the moment. And then we'll return uh, games zero at the minute, and then this can return, return games. Sweet. Uh, so that's, yay, I think that's probably all the red squiggly's gone. So I can come in here and do npm start, and then we're gonna watch it actually fail somewhere, and that's cool. It's cool. Nothing wrong with a little bit of errors. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, that's right, there is, I am gonna have to like look into my notes because I forgot why that happens. Um, yeah, yeah, the ES module interrupt flag, oops. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so one of the dependencies, I'm not 100% sure which one, um, has a, uh, ooh, always accept anonymous. What could go wrong with always accepting anonymous people to join? Um, types, uh, so TS config, sweet, ah, oh, wrong TS config, it's config into API. Uh, so 
one of the dependencies um, uh, doesn't have the ES module stuff set up properly. So you need to add ES module interrupt to true when um, you are doing the uh, API with um, which one? Is, uh, with the the GraphQL stuff, because yeah, you'll see those couple of errors that hit there. Um, npm start again, and there's a question from. Uh, uh, I people should just use their names on, on Twitch. It would be so much easier. I wouldn't have to try and work out how to pronounce everyone. Um, but there's a question from Nose Ratio. Uh, there's a question from a C sharp person with Rusty TypeScript. Why do you use type to export those versus uh, uh, versus class? Um, the reason that I'm using those as type, not class, is because I'm actually not going to be creating any instances of them. I'm actually just going to return them as, um, uh, like, kind of map them through. So the 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 stuff is um, uh, like. Right now, it's it's a bit more of a hack because um, I'm by putting it into uh, where was it the array here, um, but realistically, you'd want like a you know a database backend, whether it's like a a Mongo or a Cosmos or a SQL or whatever it might be, um, and then you more just using like a um, like a query that's going to return you, and you just it's coming back as just a JavaScript object, like as a, maybe a JSON result, and you're like, yeah, this is a you know a type of this, but you like you're only telling it that because it is, because um, it like particularly when you're pulling data out of databases, it's not like with C sharp or um, or uh, the .NET languages where you are creating instances of them and unpacking the data in. You don't. You're not creating the instance um, using a lot of the like the data comms tools in um, in JavaScript. So that's why I tend to use type. Um, just to me, it indicates I'm not creating something here. I'm just pulling it back. So yeah, hopefully that makes a bit of sense um, for behind the logic that I've got there. So let's have a look at um, how we're gonna like where we go. So let's start by. Um, Making it so we can get back a specific game, or, or actually, should we make it so you can create games because it's not a whole lot of value, in um, like, yeah, until you can create a game, it's not like there's not a whole lot you can do here. Yeah, probably should do create game. Um, but yeah, the uh, so a question from um to the Mac Solutions. Uh, yeah, like this could work with a uh, with an Azure SQL DB. Um, obviously, you would have to do that integration layer. Um, uh, I'm working on another demo that I'll hopefully get done um, soon and that I can, uh, I'll either write an article or I might do another stream about it, um, which uses Cosmos as the backend um, and Cosmos SQL queries to do the, the backend stuff. So you can actually see how you could do that. And then it'd just be a case uh, to then pull that out through gra um, GraphQL. But then it, like then if you're just using like Azure SQL or if you're using like MySQL or Mongo or, or whatever it is, um, it's just like how you're doing the data mapping is really the only difference there then. Um, Cool. Uh, so yeah, I think before we kick on, we probably need to make a way that we can actually get some data back. Uh, so to, to create that, um, the data here, because currently we can't. Uh, and for that, we're gonna need to set up a mutation. So with GraphQL, um, queries are read-only operations. Mutations are um, uh, write operations, whether it's an insert or an update or uh, whatever it might be. So we do mutation and mutation. Uh, do I call it mutation? Yeah, yeah, we'll call it mutation. Uh, and then we do type mutation. And then we're gonna do create game and that will return a game. Okay, so for that, I'll then need to come down into here and do mutation. And that will have create game and this is where, like, so this is in, oh, also it's really type, return game. Uh, and this is where, uh, like, from the UI, we'd actually call and, and get set up and starting to run. So, how do we go about that? Well, we're going to need to go out to the API um, and pull down the data. So, actually, let's grab this, let's close that, grab this one, um, and we'll do const API uh, uh, trivia. API, 
Oops, equals that. Yep, cool. So that's that's where we're going to hit. Um, it obviously, it's hard coded. You could, if you so wanted to, um, do other stuff. Oh, cool. Um, I'm not going to be using the the chat in um, in uh, live share, but yeah, I forgot that that was there. Uh, it was just coming up as a notification, but it was just that Amy had joined the chat. Player one has entered. Player two has entered the game. Um, okay, so how does create quiz work? Well, first off, I'm going to need to grab those questions. So we do actually. I'm going to make uh, so we do const uh, questions equals oh, uh, axios. Did I have I imported axios? I don't think I have. Uh, do 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 import axios from axios. There we go. Sweet. Uh, um, cool. So uh, that and then we go get from the trivia API. Uh, I didn't say that anything suspicious this time, did I? I? I was just pointing out that there was a chat session popped up and it was just telling me that you had joined um, the live share session, which I already knew because you're listed as a participant. So why did it need to tell me that there? Weird. Um, okay, so this actually returns me a promise. Cool. Um, so we'll make this an async. And now that's gonna be a prom promise. And where where are we? We want to be there, and we'll wait on that. Cool. So now we have, a, yep, an, an any like a random thing. Um, do, do, do. Uh, yeah. Um, I I didn't. I've I've never joined my own live share session, so I didn't know there was a chat either. Um, and like I said, I don't know why it actually pops that up. Uh, let's. But we'll leave the explorer open. Um, for for those who want to have a look at like files that I've got, uh, I'm gonna create just a little function that will generate me uh, like a random ID um, for it for the game, and that will be that. Whoops, where's my arrow? And then we're gonna do copy and paste from elsewhere. Ha ha ha. Const character chars equals a b c d e f g j i j. Oh man. Let's start that again. Actually, uh, we're just going to go across the keyboard because that way I don't have to try and talk and recite the alphabet at the same time. There we go. Okay, so there's all the letters of the alphabet, I think. Um, please feel free to tell me that there's something missing and I will just flat out ignore it. Um, we'll make the code equals an empty string and then we're going to do for I have... Uh, let i equals zero, i is less than, let's make a four character id, uh, i plus plus, and then we'll do uh, const random equals math dot floor, math dot random star characters dot length, yeah, okay, so that will give me a, I'm just gonna collapse that touch. Um, so that will give me a random number between zero and the length of the array. Uh, so the number of characters that are, are there, and then we'll do code plus equals um, chars random, and then we'll return random, uh, return chars code, oh, we'll return something. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll find something and we'll return it, uh, whatever that might be. Um, yeah, I'm not using Unicode characters. <laughs> uh, ID is uh, ID, let's not call that ID, ID generator, and uh, we're ID gen. Uh, so there we go, we've got an ID for the game. Uh, and then we're going to const game equals id colon id state will be game state dot waiting for players and uh, then this has what does it have questions yeah 
Uh, wait. Let me have a look at my notes because uh, my brain hurts. Questions. Uh, well, wait, is that right? No, it's players. Players will be in NPR, array. Players. And there we go. Questions will be questions.map Q. Uh, do, 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 return. Um, ID, ID generator. So we'll just generate a random ID for here, or no, we want to make it easy to find. Um, so we, ID will be the question dot, uh, what was question dot question? Question, we go question, oops, uh, will be Q, uh, will be Q dot question. Um, hmm. I, for for a database, you probably want to do something like you know, strip random characters out of it. Maybe like sanitize the apostrophe semicolon double um, double dash so that you don't write a SQL injection attack like uh, Troy did with an email yesterday. <laughs> that was funny. Oh wait, questions dot data. That's it for the response. Um, wait, is that gonna be right? No, questions dot data dot result. Yeah, results. There we go. Cool. Um, then ants correct answer will be q dot correct answer and answers will be q dot incorrect answers, which is an array dot concat q dot correct answer. So the last. Answer is always going to be the correct answer. Uh, easy way to win um, the game because it's always going to be the last question. And I think that's pretty much it. So then we're going to chuck that into games.push game. And that's in the wrong place. Oops. Uh, that could go there, 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 whatever. And then we'll return game. Ta da! Ta-da! Now, let's just make sure this did pick up all the changes. I think it, it is running in watch mode, I think. Um, so I should pick up stuff as I change, but we'll see in a second. Come on, TypeScript compiler, there we go. Sweet. Cool. Uh, we want the GraphQL endpoint. So this should load up the GraphQL Playground. It didn't cry. Um, oh, what did I do wrong somewhere? Uh, do, 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 function. Dollars return out HTTP. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Host. Host. No. Function.json. Um, do, 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 yeah, return. Um, let's have a look. Yeah. That's annoying. I love when demos don't work. Um, uh, request in HTTP trigger. Yep. Dist will have the index. Whoa, look at that. Who knows what that says? Um, but yeah. Okay, maybe I'm just gonna get rid of the playground property. That might be the issue. Uh, instead of .ts, your script file doesn't match. Um, uh, that's because it's compiled down to JavaScript uh, into the dist slash um, GraphQL folder. That's why um, the file extension is dif different. Because, uh, the, yeah, the compilation happens beforehand. And we're going to do that. That should reload everything, I think. Yeah. Uh, yep, there we go. It's restarted. Reload. Ah, okay. i would obviously broken the playground with that. Ta-da! Look at this. We're in the GraphQL playground. Um, biggest problem with the GraphQL playground is that it gets it's super chatty. Like, it constantly polls. Uh, unless you go into the settings and turn it off. So your Azure Functions logs become really hard to read if you're using the playground. 
um, you have to come into, I think it's in here, yeah, polling interval. Yeah, so you'd like turn off polling. Um, but polling is useful because what I can do if I close settings is I can go bang and they get autocomplete. So we want games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or we can do mutations like, uh, what is it? A mutation, create game. And then we will grab the ID, uh, we'll grab the questions. Yeah, uh, and game, uh, yep, state. We go, boom, run that. Uh, what's it telling me there's an error about? Come on. Ah, because I don't need the parentheses. Yeah, there we go. Uh, oh yeah, questions, I need to unpack that. We'll grab the ID question and then the answers because we know which one the correct answer is going to be. Um, we're not using any CSS screen. Excellent. Uh, expected value of game state received zero. Ah, yeah. So here is a, um, um, a fun thing about TypeScript uh, enums, which I conveniently wrote a blog about. Dude, dude, dude. So TypeScript enums by default are numerical. So so let's say that we had like an enum which was you know days of the week, and you have to, and the function says that you need to provide days of the week as the type of the argument. Well, I can pass in the number of two, because two is a valid member of this enum, because the enum is actually just numbers under the hood, um, and like you dump that out as the object, and that's what you get. Um, zero is Sunday, two is Tuesday, uh, and the enum has then properties that uh, that match up. The way that you'd expect. So that can be a real pain, um, particularly when doing GraphQL. You've either got to write like a converter or you just do uh, what I prefer to do, come into types, and this becomes a string enum. And like this, because we make all the values strings. Um, it's kind of like strongly typed magic strings then, um, which, you know, have your opinions on magic strings, but that, uh, come on. Expected game state, but received waiting for players. Come on, did I put that? Uh, let's just get rid of state for the minute. Ta-da! That's easier. Um, so that's how we do it. Uh, and there we go. We've got our um, a view of quizzes. Hey, and then what I could do is uh, we would start going query, and you do games, and then we go ID, and then questions, and then questions, we would grab the question. Let's just have a look at that. So there you go, you can have a look at all the questions that are now dumped in. Too easy. But let's say if you wanted to get back a specific question, that's where the game query would come in, where we go like ID, and then that would be um, M, H, did it, oops, did it. Uh, and then that's, well, I'm funnily enough, going to work because it did grab the first one out of there. Um, but what was it if we went query games? Yes. Uh, ID. Yeah, so let's just get all the game IDs. So let's say that you wanted to get not the first one in the list because we can totally do that. Um, so yeah, you go that. But unfortunately, that's going to keep giving you the first one because we haven't implemented how you do um, like step like step downs, like in I like, will deal with parameters or anything like that. So time to look at how we do with that. Resolvers. Uh, so we come back to our resolvers and we obviously need to fix up this function. Um, this one, yeah, that's fine because that's really just for debugging. Uh, so here we are going to have to get the ID parameter. Uh, now with the way um, the functions query functions work in GraphQL, or sorry, particularly with Apollo, is that you get a couple of arguments passed to them. Um, uh, the first one is uh, the, I think some information about the incoming request. Um, by and large, I tend to ignore it. Then we get the parameters that have been provided to that query or to that mutation. And then lastly, we get uh, context. And then, uh, so context can be used, like if you've got a, like a, um, connected to a database, you might put that in context so that each query doesn't have to create its own connection. Um, and you can do like connection sharing and, and stuff like that. So we need the ID property out of the arguments that come in there. 
and then we're going to go const game equals games dot find g g dot id equals id um, and if there isn't a game so you've given me a bad id we're going to throw new validation error so validation error is actually a type that comes out of um uh, out of Apollo, so if we just hover over, will it give us that, or is it just going to want to wait until I, yeah, it wants to wait till I've got the message in there, and we we'll say no game found, um, and what that does is uh, throwing the error like this will then bubble it up properly into GraphQL's um, error handling, and the way the error responses come back out. Um, uh, huh. So, uh, so uh, Jay Robbio's. Uh, saying that you can't see anything other than um, the heading. Uh, hey, Amy, are you able to like actually see any of the code through live share? I, like, honestly, I can't see live share um, because I'm like not connected to my own live share. That would be weird. Um, but uh, it doesn't look like you are actually in anyway. I can't see you listed as a participant. Um, so maybe you like give it a refresh or, or hit the link again. Um, see if you can get back in. That, that might be easier. Um, and I'll keep an eye on that. To, okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, you, I, I turned on guest joins. Um, so that, should, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, at least I think I turned on guest joins. Do, do, uh, can I um, live share configure... Uh, um, I'm not sure I can change the session once it's started, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look. Copy collaboration link, focus participants. Um, no, it, you should be able to join as anonymous because um, I've set it to do that. Um, right, here we go. No, that just shows me where the participants are. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, there we go. You have joined now. I can see you have popped in. Cool, there we go. Um, excellent, uh, anyway, uh, we've we've now built our, um, oh, I had to sign in. Oh, huh, weird. Um, I'll, I'll have a play around with live share. Uh, I've got enough personal accounts that I could probably try that um, somewhere. So I'll have a try with that a bit later on. Anyway. Um, okay, okay. so we finished out the, the query resolver. Um, we've thrown the validation error. We'll have a look at that in a second, and then we're going to return the actual game. Um, do, 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 where, here we go. Okay, so this is going to say, no game found, because it's just all stored in an in-memory array, um, modified the query, restarted the server, boom, we lost our game data, and that's what it looks like when you get an error back. So let's go create a game. Uh, it is going to be whatever that is. Copy and paste that over here. Sweet. So uh, it's still the first one. Um, so we'll grab a, create another game. So this will be the second one in the list. Yep. So we'll grab that, that, uh, oops, up here, paste, query. Ta-da! Look at that. So we're, so now we're able to, um, to get different games. Excellent. That's the kind of thing that we want. Let's start putting that into our UI. Oh, uh, actually... I wish you do the right thing and like commit some stuff to Git, you know, because uh, at some point I'm sure something will crash and I want to roll back. Okay, uh, and I'm going to close the playground so I don't have the functions continuously kicking off. Uh, status cool git add dash a git commit gem uh, first pass on the GraphQL setup with query and mutation. Uh, so uh, Amy's asked what the terminal I've got set up. Um, this is uh, WSL2, um, so you name A. So this is an Ubuntu um, uh, on WSL2. That's what I've got there. But then I run a bunch of customizations over the top. So I'm actually in a window manager called Tmux. Uh, inside uh, inside of WSL, um, so that's doing like my split screens and things like that. So Tmux is kind of like a window manager, like you would have um, in any 
um, desktop environment, um, but it's for terminals sessions. Uh, so I can do funky things like splits and splits and split and things can get really tiny, uh, but that's really unhelpful. So we'll close those. Um, and then I just have a bunch of shortcut keys to move around to the different ones. Uh, there and up. Uh, you see a little blue B flash up in the bottom right hand ish corner. Um, that's the, the modifier key. Uh, and then I've just also customized it with a few things that have constant relevance to me. So, like my IP addresses, um, uh, like internal and external, uh, date and time, and it's currently cold. So, I've got my little skiing um, uh, cat down there, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then um, ZSH is the shell that I'm running. Uh, uh, hi, John. Welcome ab aboard. Um, we're just having a look at the terminal um, that I've got set up here. Uh, yeah, so then I've got a um, ZSH is the, the shell that I log into, and I use um, oh my ZSH, which is uh, just a bunch of customizations over the top of it. Um, and the theme I've got is called Starship, I think it is, or Spaceship. Um, and that's doing the like so because I'm in a git branch like if I do pwd uh, you'll see that I've got like this whole prefix like I don't care about that prefix most of the time um, so that's getting collapsed away and it's just the git root that I'm in so then like when I'm in the API folder you'll see it's the git root slash API um, branch that I'm on um, I've got some outbound commits to go because I just added that and then it's detecting things like I've got a package JSON file so it's going well you know. Uh, this is a package JSON, the version in there is that, um, the version of Node that I've got set up and things like that. Um, so if I was, to, let's just go have a look at one of my other Git repos. Uh, we're .NET. So like it, it detects all different kinds of languages. This one's detected as a .NET project. Cool. Um, uh, let's see, do I have anything else, like any other languages? Um, uh, I don't think I've got anything in any other languages. Because um, like if you've got Python projects or Ruby projects, it'll bring up like the version of Ruby, and like if you're using an RVM or whatnot, it'll tell you that. Um, I also have uh, FNM, um, so I could do like use 13, um, then that'll swap to to Node version 13, and you see that that change or FNM use 12, and then that'll pop back to 12, and we'll see that update there. Um, and yeah, I, I use URL code. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for the the link around the terminal setup, and yeah. URL view is super cool. Like I come up here, B U, and there's the URLs. Uh, so it's running on that. Bang, buy that to the browser. Ta -da. It's cool. I, it's actually I find it really useful when working with um, like Git and GitHub and doing like multiple branches, then creating pull requests. Because it's like here's the pull request branch, and you're like, oh, now I've got to go up and copy it. And uh, you just use URL view to to pop that up, and then um, just launch it straight into the browser. Then it drops you straight into create pull requests, which is nifty. Um, okay, anyway, uh, we are going to start building out the UI in GraphQL. Um, let's just close off those little notifications down there. Bop. Um, and I'll close that. Don't need the split tabs there. We're going to come down to uh, app.tsx, and then I'll probably actually just delete all of this. Uh, and this is where I could also do some stuff with CSS Grid, but I'm totally not going to do that because I don't know how to use CSS Grid and I can't find anyone that's written any decent documentation on doing it. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that troll there for Amy to, to do what she will with it. Um, oh, I'm going to need some dependencies because I'm going to need probably some routing and stuff like that, aren't I? Yes. Yes, I will. Uh, okay, so let's pop here. We're going to do npm i dash d react router dom. I'm going to use that. Um, to connect to the GraphQL backend, I'm going to use Apollo. Uh, Apollo has some stuff for React already. Uh, so what do I need? I need Apollo Boost. Boost. I need at Apollo slash React hooks. I don't know why some of them are like um, at prefix and some of them aren't. That's annoying. Uh, GraphQL, GraphQL tag. Um, and I'll just do types slash react router dom. Normally I'd put the types in the, um, uh, in the dev dependencies, but it's just easier if I just 
punch everything through one npm install. Uh, no, no, I, I'm not even going to do like display flex. I'm just going to put everything in tables because it's just easier. I'm just going to nest a couple of tables. It's 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 layout, like yeah. Maybe I'll float a div here or there just for fun. That's yeah, yeah. Just randomly float divs. <laughs> I have actually watched your talk a couple of times. Um, doesn't mean I remember any of it. All right. Uh, so here, what do I need? Uh, I don't need those two. Eh, bar. I'll leave the app CSS. Get rid of the logo. I don't care for your logo anymore, React. And we are going to delete all of that. And then I'm going to create a router. Uh, router. There we go. Boom. Look at that. TypeScript auto imports. So much cooler. Um, but I'm going to change that. Uh, it should be browser router as router router. There we go. Um, and we will then define uh, some, actually let's put the div inside of the router. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, then we're going to have a couple of routes. We'll do uh, route, uh, route, path will be the default path and that could be an exact match and the component will be a new component we'll create shortly called create game all right uh we got to import no that should be out routed there excellent we'll create game in a minute um oops p new file uh create game.tsx uh, import react from react and const create create game is going to be a react react.fc because it's a functional component and then that can return and uh, we'll just do like a div with a h h1 in it that says create a new game and then we'll uh, export default create game. Boom, format that. We can then go import that. Ta-da, devs. I know I could come to your NDC workshop in Melbourne uh, for Melbourne, but I'm gonna be running my own workshop and everyone's gonna come to mine because mine's gonna be better. Oh, did you hear a plane go over? I can't hear it because I've got my headphones on. Uh, but yes, nostalgia. Nostalgia of every now and then a plane comes by. So sad. Okay. Um, now, inside of create game, let's go create uh, create game. I'm just going to keep this up, uh, the code up on my other screen so I know what, needs, what I'm actually doing here. Um, now, this is going to need to have a GraphQL query. So we're gonna do const uh, get uh, create game. Now, um, so the way that we would write a query in GraphQL is basically the same. Uh, so, so whether we're writing a query or a mutation kind of depends. Uh, and that's where probably want uh, the playground back. Do, do, do. So I want to do this. Uh, so we uh, we want this as a GraphQL um, thingamabob, uh, obje uh, object, object literal, um, so in, no, template literal, that's what it is. So we're going to import graph uh, GQL from GraphQL tag. So this is, um, so GraphQL tag is a library that will um, uh, allow you to create uh, um, template literals that you can pass to um, GraphQL endpoints to be able to, to query and stuff like that, or to do mutations and whatnot. Um, and you would normally do it like this. So there we go. Um, so the mutation, um, I don't actually want the questions back. Um, at this point, I really only care about the ID because the ID is the thing that we're gonna pass through to like the future screens, then future screens could um, could query for, for more data and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna create game and then get the ID returned from there. Um, so that's our mutation set up. Now, uh, need some way that I'm gonna be able to, to connect that with 
Apollo, and that's what the Apollo React hooks um, package that I imported was. So we would, um, so let's let's start with um, some, let's go some state first using, let's do this all hooks. Um, uh, so no, I'm not, I'm actually not creating um, strongly typed um, stuff from the React, uh, so from the GraphQL to be used in like React or anything like that. Um, I talked about that a bit earlier, uh, John. Um, you can do it. Uh, there are some packages out there that will do it for you. Um, they're just a bit more complex to set up and I didn't want to go through the process of doing that. I do have another project that I'm working on where hopefully I will get a chance to set all that sort of stuff up. So yeah. Um, right now, it's just I'm just kind of manually doing it. But yeah, there's some really cool stuff. Um, uh, it's called GraphQL Code Generator, I think, um, that can do it. Yeah, but I, I'm not using it. So let's do creating and set creating, creating. Um, so just as some state, we'll use state. And initially we're not creating. So this would just be like, you know, essentially our loading state. Uh, and then I am going to need the mutation. Now this one is gonna be a bit trickier. So we're going to do create game. So this will be the hook that we actually call from Apollo. And then this is gonna give us loading, um, a bunch of properties back. So loading, uh, called, data, and error. Um, so these are kind of like some of the relevant stuff that you would get. And then this is use mutation. mutation uh, and then that will take create game. Now use mutation comes from import use mutation from at Apollo React hooks. Cool. Dun 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 dun. Ta da! Okay. Uh, now the way that uh, I'm going to work, like so if you click the there's going to be a creating button here in a moment. Actually, let's go uh, button. On click, we'll actually we'll come back to what the on click does, and we'll do start a new game. All right, uh, and the way this will work is that when you click the button, um, we're going to set the state to creating because we want to be disable, like avoid double clicks, and we do uh, disable if we're creating. Uh, so on click, we will. Oops, set creating to true. And then we can do uh, use effect and this effect will take creating as an input and uh, it's gonna take create game because if we are creating, we will call create game. So create game is a function if we hover over it, uh, it's a it's an async function returns a promise. Um, uh, we don't actually need to capture that because it's going to update the second argument of that um, uh, the response from use mutation where I'm unpacking like loading called etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, like you you could probably use the loading property and the called property here instead of creating. So you might say like if not called and not loading or something like that. But it I. I I find it becomes really unreadable when you try and look at some of those properties um, and match them in. Uh, so yeah, we're, I'm not gonna use them um, for that uh, that cr creating state instead uh, uh, that we have there. Instead, I'm gonna have another use effect. And inside of this one, if we're not loading, load it, if we're not in a loading state and we called and we haven't got an error, because we don't control the, the updates of those properties. Um, we're just going to console.log, so we can see what the data is. Console.log the data, so like this, and this is what's gonna get triggered by the response back. Um, else, if there was an error, we're just gonna console.error, error. Yeah, that'll do. And then this is going to use um, some hooks of loading, called, data, and error. Um, so if anyone's wondering why I'm passing in um, uh, Apollo client code gen needs Apollo CLI. Oh, okay, cool. So there is another way to generate the types. Um, I haven't used the Apollo CLI. Um, I've only used the, the schema generator or whatever it's called. 
Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't comment on that one specifically. Um, if you, if anyone's wondering like what this array is on the use effect, these are the dependencies that are going to be inside of that effect. So like the changes to these um, these properties will cause the effect to run. Uh, if the, if a change has happened and none of those have changed, then it won't um, won't run the effect. So that's uh, just, uh, like that's the the, um, the reason that I'm passing those in. So as, if anyone's not done a whole lot of React um, uh, or React with hooks. Now, okay, um, so let's let's have a look at this in the browser, and here. Uh, oh, okay. So here is an error. Uh, that's a good point. Um, so uh, the error is saying that it can't find client in context or passed in as an. Uh, so, so I've said that I'm using. Um, uh, let's just collapse that then. So I've said that I want to use the use mutation hook over here, but I've. I've not actually set up a connection to a GraphQL server for Apollo to use. Um, and we can do that using a provider that it's talking about here. So this is a context provider inside of uh, React and we will go Apollo, uh, Apollo provider. Um, and then that will just pop everything inside of it. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, Okay, cool. And the Apollo provider is going to need a client. So this is the connection that we're actually setting up. So we do const client equals new Apollo client. Oh, wait, is it? No. But yeah, new Apollo client. Yep. And then that is probably going to take some arguments. Hmm, doesn't want to auto import. Um, that one is coming from import. Apollo client from Apollo boost. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, so that's the Apollo client and then that can come here as client equals client. And this is going to require um, some uh, some options. Like it's saying, well, I haven't passed anything in there. Uh, and the most important option that I have to pass in is the endpoint that I'm connecting. So we'll do const GraphQL endpoint. And that's going to be um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, how are we going to do this? Yeah. Um, actually, no. Uh, yeah, we'll use this template literal uh, and then API slash GraphQL. Now, the point of the template literal is because in production, we're not going to have it on two separate ports. We're going to have it on the one host. So process.env.node.env equals production. So when it's in production, we're going to have an empty string. Otherwise, we're going to have local, oops, local host colon 7071. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay, cool here, and then we do URL Yuri colon GraphQL endpoint. Is that it? Is it Yuri? Uh, wait, is that where? Oh, client should be that. It's uh, it's the default export. It's not the excellent. Our game has started. Fantastic. Let's open up some dev tools. Pop them at the bottom because we got so many things open here. I don't care about. Um, new updates, cool, that's all good, bang, start new game, hey, there we go, oh, look at that, we got a response back, if we have a look in network, and change my filter, our GraphQL server executed, yeah, we got a response, and if we come over to playground and go to this one up here, Games, ta-da, we've started a game. Isn't it exciting? We're probably gonna break that game shortly because it's quite likely that we will um, restart our server. Okay, well, we, I mean, we've started a game, but uh, we, can't, we can't play the game yet because it doesn't go anywhere. So the next thing is to actually allow players to join the game. And for that, I am going to Commit first, commit, 
creating games from the you are from the web not via web using hooks awesome and a massive rewrite of app.tsx is what we would expect uh, okay cool so now we're going to need to have you know the next page to do that we're going to go a uh, new file and then we'll do um, let's say join game.tsx that yeah we'll do join game and uh, import re import react from react and we const join game as a react dot dot fc I probably should have some snippet set up that does this because I write this code so frequently and then that can return our div with h1 of join the game and then export default join game and now we can do uh, route path equals let's go game slash join sla and we're going to need the game id so what's the idea of the game we want to join so yep um, component will be join game and ta-da so we're going to need to make sure that create game can navigate when we have success so like when we get the data back uh, and using uh, react router dom we get some hooks so const history his history equals use history and we can go history dot push and we'll go slash game slash join slash uh, dollars bracket data dot create game dot id id okay ah and then i need to add history as a dependency on there i mean like kind of don't have to i don't think history is going to change um but it's better to to do it uh so you, it's just clear of all the dependencies all right so that's reloaded start a new game excellent so we can join the game except i don't have any way to do that um uh, we probably need to implement the join game screen uh we're gonna go uh actually you know what let's make it so that we can gr we can say the id of the game that you want to join and for that we'll use another hook from react router and we we'll do const um id equals use params that's it so this is going to unpack uh on app.tsx we have this colon id it's going to unpack that property for us neat uh, so we'll grab that there and join game colon uh, join game colon id so look at that actually let's pop there oh don't need the yeah it's not a, not actually a literal yeah, let's keep this side by side so we can see how everything's running. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go label four equals name, uh, and then we'll do enter your name. Input type equals text, ID equals equals name. Uh, I don't care about max links or anything like that. Uh, oh, that's right. HTML4 because of how React works. Uh, we're gonna need some. We need some state const name, comma, set name equals use state empty string, and then we go value is gonna be name, and on change can be do do do. Oops, e set state e oh, come on set name e dot target e dot target dot value okay so that's going to set that state up and just do a space on the end of that and this is where we could you know actually write some css um but i'm not going to do that because i've got better things to do in my life than write css
<laughs> Div. Uh, actually, no. Um, is button an inline or a block element? I think it's a block level element. Uh, sorry, an inline element. So we will write a hacky bit of CSS. Now nah, we're just going to do a div because there's nothing better than wrapping things in as many divs as we possibly can. Um, Amy can correct me if I'm wrong that button is a block level element or whether it's inline. And then we'll do another div, another div, another div, div. Um, oh, here's a fun thing that I learned. It, like if you've got the matching tags there, don't use F12 to do the rename because it's actually going to rename the TypeScript definitions and that breaks a whole lot of crap. Um, button. Um, then we will go join the game. Uh, we'll do disabled when where there is no name. So can't join yet. Excellent. Um, we need to do something. So when we actually join the game, we're going to need to do something. Uh, so how does that work? Let's go back to my notes. Uh, we are probably going to need a bit of stuff. Um, so that's, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Start. There it is. Okay. So we're going to need to have a mutation to add the player to the game. Makes sense. So import graph, uh, GQL from GraphQL tag. And then we're going to do... Oh, yeah. Actually, we don't have a way for someone to join the game. Do we? No, we're going to need to create a new mutation on our schema. Add in mutation, we go add player to game. This will take game, uh, this will take an ID, which will be ID, and that's going to be the game. And then we're going to take a name, which will be a string, and that's also not null, which will be the name of the player. So yeah, the ID that they're doing and the game that they're joining, cool. And then that can return a game. Yeah, that can return the game. Or was that should that return the player? Maybe that will return the player, and that won't return it. And no. Oops. Just going back to my notes. See what I did return. Um, no, I don't want that. There we go. What do I return here? Yeah, I did return the player. Um, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So then we're going to come to our resolvers, and inside of here, I'm going to create a new mutation, which will be. Uh, add player. Uh, mutations like queries get the same arguments, um, ID and then name. Um, so the first argument I'm just ignoring because I'm not using anything there. Uh, player. Ooh, add player to types. Sweet. Um, yeah, and yeah, then then that's returned. Uh, you know, like I'm gonna read the HTML reference for button right now. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, look, I'm, I'm glad that Amy's, I mean, it's just fancy uh, O data. Hey, that's my line. Don't steal my line about GraphQL, because yes, it is. Um, it is fancy O data, but people like it. So let's make sure that we do, like, you know, show them how to do the cool stuff that you want to do as a web dev. Um, I'm going to maximize this because I don't need the browser open at the minute. Oh, we're going to lose our game. Well, in fact, we've already lost our game because um, we've done that. Anyway, I'm going to go... Did we find our game? If not, um, we do that. And we do, so we don't need to do validation checks to make sure that like an ID was passed or that a name was passed. Like, even though it's a non-null field, um, we we can just make the assumption that it's um, that it's there. Because GraphQL, uh, we've said that it's a non-null field, it will do the null check for us, uh, which is useful. useful. Um, well, what's Amy said to us on Twitter? Yeah, that's right. It's it's me trolling Rob, uh, and and Rob trolling me, trolling him. That's my common line. Whenever uh, I see Rob Crowley talking about GraphQL, I'm just like, yeah, no, it's fancy. O it's just OData for JavaScript developers. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, back to it. Um, I'm I am going to check to make sure that if the game state is uh, so, if it's not a uh, game state of waiting for players, then we're going to throw new validation error. Game all is already started. No cheating. No cheating. Cheat. 
Cheating. There we go. Eyes. Eyes can spells today. No, it's a lie. I can't spell on the, uh, on the best of days. Um, so let's do const player ID equals ID generator. Uh, just because, uh, wait. Yeah, just because I've, I thought I said that the player needed an ID, didn't it? Const player equals player uh, ID of player ID, name colon na a name, and then uh, answers are going to be an empty array because they haven't done that yet. And then we're going to do game.players.push uh, player. Yeah, so like this is all the stuff if you were using um, like a like a proper database backend, you would be um, and not just pushing into array. That's where you would like have your like your, your DB connector, and you'd be like pushing up like running a SQL query or whatnot. Or you might have like a um, like a repository pattern that you're calling a repository that's doing it. Um, yeah. So for yeah for for those that have asked about how you do um, like data operations, that's sort of where it would all fit. Um, cool. So that add player is done. Sweet. Uh, so they can join the game, and now we can write that mutation. So do const uh, add player equals gql double backtick, and this will be a mutation um, add player to game, and this will take uh, id as an i as an id bang, and then I think that's how we do it. Uh, yep, and then we do dollars name colon string bang. So the um, so what this denotes with GraphQL is that this is going to be a variable available um, to the query, uh, and when I invoke this using the use mutation uh, uh, hook from uh, React, uh, so the Apollo, um, I can pass that as a dynamic variable in, uh, and then we will call add player to game. So so this is just the name of the mutation. I could call this add player and then, uh, so that's just from a traceability standpoint through um, uh, through the GraphQL logging. Like here's the mutation was called, like that's the name of the mutation. Um, add player, so you could do like add player screen. So on the add player screen, um, like so you can find out mutations that are happening from somewhere. Um, and then I will do, so then, Add player is the mutation that we're going to call here. Um, the reason for that, like, I can batch up a bunch of stuff inside of this one mutation submission to um, the server. Uh, in fact, we might actually give that a crack and see if it works. Um, so this is going to receive ID, and that will be assigned the variable ID that I passed in. And this requires name, which will be the name variable that's um, in there. And we'll just grab the ID of the player. Like I don't need the name back because I already have that. Um, so let's just go. Yep, cool. And then we're going to const add player to game. And then uh, what do I care about here? Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about like the loading and stuff like that. We'll just do the data and we'll call this add player data. Uh, that will be use mutation and then add player. Cool, done, um, all right. Uh, because as always, I like to have a uh, loading state. So we do const uh, loading set loading equals use state true uh, false because we're currently not loading. Um, and do 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 do, and we have some effects if. Uh, loading. Oops, ha, I didn't even put that in the use effect. I need to put it in the use effect. So if loading, we'll call add player to game. Now here I need to actually pass in the variable. So we go variables. Ah, uh, not add player data. Add player to game. And now we go variables. Very. Uh, so these are like the variables that are getting passed in um, the, to uh, the the, the uh, mutation operation that we're doing. So we're going to pass in uh, a variable with ID, and we're going to do name. So those are two variables that are going to be needed. So they'll come up here and get passed in to that, at that point, and then they'll be made available to that mutation when um, when it's invoked uh, on the server. 
uh, we'll put an array which is loading and add player to game. That's the dependencies that we need. Sweet. Um, oh, and we need ID and name, <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. And then I'm getting lazy with Eric uh, handling here, so we're just going to we're just going to assume that it, it works successfully, and then we do if add player data. Um, we'll do we'll never get to the next screen, so we'll do uh, history. Actually, we need to go and get history. Const history equals use history. Ah, use history. And I'm gonna pop that. I like that. I like grouping them like that. So, uh, console dot log add player data, um, and then let's do history dot push uh, like game uh, game play, and then we'll do uh, yeah ID, uh, and then like we could go. Um, uh, add player data dot add player to game dot id. Yeah, so so like um, we we obviously haven't made that next screen yet. Uh, so we'll come back and do that. Do, 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 do. Um, let's have a look. Um, do, do, do. Actually, yeah, no, it's that's not going to be disabled name. Yeah, it's not going to be disabled. It's disabled if there isn't a name or we are loading. Yep. And on click equals uh, lo set loading to true. Alrighty. Uh, so um, just catching up on a bit of the chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know some people disagree that um, GraphQL is just fancy O data. Um, yeah, it, I use it more as a kind of a trolling response because it's fun to annoy people I know that are really fa uh, really big on GraphQL. Um, but yeah, thanks for the links. I'm actually I'll check those out afterwards because I'm sure it'll become a very boring session if you're just watching me like read uh, other people's blog posts. If, was, if I'm reading my own blog post, that's fine though. Uh, so let's go back home because we've changed the back end. So we're going to need to start a new game. We've received an error. That's nice. Should probably have a look at what that error is. Uh, okay. Let's go network, start new game. Boom. So we got a 500. Oops. There. Uh, flip this to the side. Let's have a look. What's our 500 error come back? Um, an internal server error. That would be because do, 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 do. add player is defined in resolvers but not in the schema. Ah, oh, wait, did I? I type my resolver. Ah, yeah, it's add player to game. Ta-da! That should work better. Um, no, that, that's convenient. That yeah, if you've got something wrong in the resolvers you're passing through, that don't match the schema. You you will have an error if you actually look at your uh, output in your consoles. Good to know. Uh, okay, so Aaron is joining the game. Okay, we've, we've gone to a, like a, a non-existent screen, um, but if we come back here and have a look at, uh, what was the name, of, what was the idea of the game? It was that one. Pop that in here, and then we could also add uh, players, and then we'll go name. I don't care about the name. Actually, I don't care about the questions at the minute. We'll do that. Look at that! Yes, we've successfully joined a game! Um, we can't play yet because we haven't implemented that feature. Um, but also the other thing that we probably want to do is we want to set the status of the game to like, to, to playing um, once we've joined. Like, um, I'll, I'll share the Git repo afterwards because I'm not going to implement all the things that you could be doing. Like, It's designed in a way that it could be done with multiplayer, so you can have multiple people join the game. I'm not actually going to implement that yet. Um, I just think it will take too long. 
uh, in, so instead, that's an exercise for anyone that wants to um, to play along later. Uh, so we'll git commit adding players to the game. Uh, and I'll show you um, uh, something that you can do with um, GraphQL. Like the way mutations and queries all kind of go together. Now I could do, like if I wanted to add multiple people at the screen, I could call um, add play to game multiple times. Um, just, I guess, to illustrate, we'll just do it really kind of silly and dodgy like that. We'll reload, come back here, um, come back to game, join, is that one was it? Yeah, that's the game to join. And we'll pretend Amy is joining the game. Boop, there we go. And now if we query, so, um, oh wait, did I, did I not do that correctly? It should have called that one twice. Uh, maybe because it, maybe it deduped it at the server level. Um, okay, if I had like a multiple um, ad place like screen, now instead what I wanted to do was um, we need to change the state of the game so that we can progress forward. So if we come back to our um, our schema, we have waiting for players and then we have started. So we want a way to like set the game to to start. So we're going to start game as a new mutation. The ID of uh, ID, and then this is just going to return game, and inside of our resolvers, we we'll create a new mutation which is start game, and that will take ignore ID, and then return game. Boom. I really should pull this out to. Uh, utility method, but I can't be bothered at the minute. Uh, so we'll find our game if uh, game not equal to game state waiting for players. So if the game's like already started and stuff like that, we want to throw, throw new validation error. Game is already underway or complete. Uh, otherwise, we do game dot state equals uh, equals game state dot started, and we'll return game game dot state. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's all done. Um, now our games are all gone, which means we've got to start again. That's cool because we'll actually implement calling that. So here instead we'll do start game. And that will take an ID, which will be dollars ID, and then that will return ID players. Um, yeah, let's just do players for for funsies' sake, and that could be ID and name. Cool. Um, now, this this should work. Should work. Start new game. Uh, Aaron is joining the game. Cool. Let's have a look at, ah, no game matching that found. It's this game. Uh, da, 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 da. Oops. Oops. WGPB, WGPB. Ta-da, game is Theoretically started. Um, uh, wait, did I fix that state issue? Yeah, that was fantastic. Look, see, so, so the game is started. So we actually like so we executed two queries kind of in a batch. Um, so that reduces the amount of round trips you got to do with your server. So that's like a, you know, a, a nifty thing to know that you can do with GraphQL. Uh, and actually, it commit starting the. Uh, setting game setting game to started when player joins not supporting multi multiple players yet cool there we go alright let's let's continue on let's do the um, 
play game screen. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this one. And uh, we're going to game player ID ID. So we'll come back to app.tsx and we're going to create a route to path equals slash game slash play slash colon ID slash colon player ID and then the component is going to be play game. Now we're going to create a new file called playgame.tsx. Excellent and import react from react and const play game fc do do return div h1 play game and then that and then export default play game that's not how you export that's how you that's not how you spell it either export what cool okay so play game is uh still catching up with the intellisense fantastic uh now we want our game id was use param from react router come on oh my computer's like starting to struggle. I was like i don't want to be doing all of this anymore uh import use params and um, we'll, we'll, i'm sure we'll use history at some point um from react router dom oh my typing is getting really worse import from from blah yeah i'm pretty sure that my machine has started chugging on something i might actually just kill the graphql server for a moment um because yeah i i'm finding code has just slowed down massively i think uh let's have a look at what task manager says and I'm gonna put that up on screen because no, that's a bit fr actually yeah, yeah. The chattiness of um, of the GraphQL backend um, and the playground. So let's just kill a couple of those things. I'm also gonna blame uh, Australian internet for the reason everything's buffering. Uh, but there, there we go. Cool. That should have stuff performing a little bit better. Let's just check. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit better. Um, CPU, CPU is fine, but my uh, my machine's memory usage is pinging up high, um, and that's on the part of uh, WSL two running. Okay, uh, play game ID. Okay. VS Code seems to be a bit more responsive, so I'm going to assume that we're tracking a little bit better. Okay, um, if we're playing the game, we're going to need to actually get all the questions. So we'll do GraphQL uh, from GraphQL tag. Yeah, uh, is that better? Um, like, is the uh, well? I suppose I haven't been doing a whole lot, so I don't know if the buffering is better, but it should be picking up now. Uh, const get game equals g GQL, double backtick, and we're going to query, um, get game, and this will take a ID, which is ID, bang, bang, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say that it was probably um, the chattiness of the, um, the GraphQL playground. Like, it was polling every, I think, two seconds, to the Azure functions on the server. Um, and like, so it's gonna keep doing that. And if there's any memory leaks in it, then the amount of memory used by the tab is just gonna um, spiral out, uh, which it's, it's possible that there was something going on in that regards ID. And we're going to need, we're not gonna need the ID here. Um, let's go question. 
Um, yeah, we'll just get the questions here and this will be ID, question, question and answers. Cool. Um, hmm. I'm just pondering here about how I want to do it because because yeah the 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 question is always like, the correct answer is always the last one which is not really ideal, um, is it? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to change the way the back end works, and just do like a really simple thing and go sort, uh, and then I'll sort them alphabetically. Uh, that will put, like potentially change the order so it's not always the last one yeah yeah it'll do um okay cool uh answers and answers was just a string array wasn't it yeah i think so let's look at our schema um so on question yeah yeah we're not gonna return the correct answer that'd be a dumb idea cool okay now uh, okay, so I'm just gonna go back. Like, so this screen is is rather complex um, in terms of what it's doing because, uh, like, we got to obviously show all the the questions, but we we want you only really. To, I I want to do it so you can only answer one question at a time. Um, now nah, we'll just we'll just output all the questions, but this is this could be something you want to play with um, yourself is that you could get it to. Um, uh, like only show one question and then uh, after like a period of time it'll pop over to the next question and like you know essentially you got a timeout um, for how long you've got to, to complete a question but just for simplicity's sake let's just output all the questions uh, in order and we will do that mm. will we now nah, let's make them timeout questions that's how I've done it all. Like that, that's how my my sample code that I'm copying from is written. Uh, who says this is live coding? This is live coding with copy and paste, but I actually have to type everything line by line. Uh, const const uh, time remaining rem remain in. This for remaining. Yeah. Set time remain in equals use state boom. Uh, so you're gonna have a 30 second timeout to answer a question. No pressure, no pressure. Uh, we don't need history at the moment. Um, we're gonna need the answer, oops, answer that you select and then set answer equals use state. Um, and then Loading, so uh, loading state for the query to come back, because we're actually gonna kick this query off kind of as soon as we start. Um, and then we're going to need to get the data from that. And it'll be use query. So this is another hook um, provided by uh, React hooks for Apollo. Um, we give it the get game. So like as soon as this component starts, we're actually going to um, uh, trigger this off. Um, and uh, it's smart enough not to, to keep polling as the as the component re-renders. And then that will take some variables, which will be ID. Yep, cool. Oh, colon. Cool, like that. Um, and then let's go const uh, question. So the current question and set question. So... Yeah, what's the one that you're using? And then we're going to use state on that. Um, it's going to be an empty, yeah, but because we need this for display, yeah. So we're going to just create a strong typed object for that. Uh, that will have the question as a string. We'll have the answers as a string string array um, and yeah the ID as a string the ID of that okay uh, now let's start implementing the the way that this displays first 
and then we'll come back and start populating out the rest of what is there. Uh, actually, no, I need to I need to do something when the response comes back. So use effect. Um, if there was data, so if we got a response back from the server, we're going to set, uh, so we're going to get the question equals data dot game dot uh, game dot questions dot pop. So let's grab the first one. Ooh, what did I do there? That's, I set a breakpoint like, huh, I did. I don't want that break. That's a, like a follow me breakpoint or something. Weird. Uh, no, no, that is. Uh, and then we'll set the time remaining, just like reset the counter back to 30. And then we're going to set question as the current question. Yes. So here we will need data. Set. Uh, is that, that's all we need, I think. He, yes, I also have that in the wrong point of my file. Pop that back up there. Sweet. Okay. Um, uh, do we do do we do a load, loading state? Yeah, we are loading and the loading. Please wait. Okay. And if not. Uh, not loading. This is where the actual code is going to get written. Um, all right, so we're going to do, uh, let's just do a snippet thing here so we don't actually need an element there. I'll do a h2, I'll go uh, time remaining, which will be time remaining h2, and then we will do q dot uh, question dot question wrong brackets the uh, oh wait um uh, no I'm not gonna do it in line like that's too that's too ugly if not if loading or not question um, we will go return div, uh, we'll do, so h1, just getting the game ready, please wait, yep, and then I can delete that, and I can delete that, delete that, that and that. So because the question, like, like if it's not set, TypeScript understands that it's um, nullability uh, there and and is like, well, that question might not have been set yet. So you might be referring to a null object. I'm like, oh, well, uh, if I do this, but if I do it like a, a gate check up here of, uh, for null and return out, um, it will pass through and knows that uh, here, it's, a, uh, it's, question, uh, it's that anonymous type or undefined but here it's only ever going to be questioned because we've done an undefined test on it. Cool. Hopefully everyone uh, follows that. Now, do I do my answers as a table or an unordered list? Um, so we're gonna do an unordered list because it's a multi-choice. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so we wanna go question.answers. Um, map answer oh. and this will return a li which has a key equals um, the answer yeah because answer is a string right why aren't you detecting that that's a string it's a string array, so that should be a string there. Whatever. Um, and we gotta go label. Uh, I don't think it needs any properties, does it? No. Because we'll put the input type equals radio um, value equals the answer. 
um, checked. No, on change, yeah, on change. Set answer. Ah, oh, that's why it's that's why it's not happy, because I have answer already defined as a variable above. So I do that. Set answer to a, and then I know because we don't because uh, that's self closing, and then we'll just do a. Yeah, I think that works. That work should work. And then we'll do a button on click equals set time remaining to zero. And then we go submit answer. So like you like when you click the button, it's gonna, it's gonna zero out. And uh, I'm gonna add some code that will make it easy to Right, so basically, when the timer hits zero, it's going to immediately pop into the next question. So for that, um, yeah, we're going to need an effect. So we're we're going to need to like do a timeout or an in. Uh, you're yeah, doing interval to count down, um, and uh, intervals with React hooks are quite uh, are interesting. So um, React hooks use interval. Yeah, interval. Um, so there's this blog post written uh, by Dan Abramov um, who works uh, on React. Uh, he does like a really good write up of why um, uh, like set interval and set time and stuff like that don't kind of work the way you would expect with hooks. Um, I'll paste the URL to that in chat because what um, essentially what he's done is um, created a hook where you just go use interval, like say how long the interval, like how many, how long each interval tick is going to be, and then what you want to do on each tick, uh, and then it does a whole bunch of intelligent stuff around cleanup and whatnot. So here is the code. It's a custom hook. I'm just going to blatantly steal it. Uh, we're going to pop that here. Do file use interval .ts. Paste that in. Um, do, 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 do. So we don't need React there, and we don't need state there. Um, export default use interval. Uh, we can then go that. Um, now we only need to write some types on this. So that'll be void. That'll be a number. Um, uh, actually, the the typing of this is tricky. What was it? Uh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Ah. So then I gotta do the use ref, which will be a void. There we go. Cool. And then, yeah, we just gotta do bang, no bang, no. Uh, there's a way that you can do like a pretend this is never null. So I think, ah, but we'll go if saved callback.current. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so yeah, basically this is um, it's using some some stuff around like the the callback you don't want to change, but the um, uh, but because every tick is going to cause that to happen, it has to do some some kind of tricky stuff. So that's where the use ref comes in. Um, I to go read the blog post because I can't do it justice properly explaining it. Use uh, interval from use interval and then we're going to come down here and uh yeah so this is um this code took me forever to try and work out originally so i will have a crack at it and we'll see if we can work out what it's actually doing so use interval it's going to take a um a delay there uh the the challenge that you've got with use interval um and like the, these timeout hooks the, the things that run outside of the render loop for react is that you can't Pass in the dependencies um, quite the same way. So, like with all the other, like use effect and things like that, we pass in the dependency. Like this is the thing that's going to change that triggers this hook. Um, the trigger of this hook is going to be outside of our control. It's going to be the interval tick. Um, that's what actually happens inside of um, use interval. Uh, so the the delay and stuff like that cause it to to cycle through. 
Now, inside of here, um, like if there was a question, uh, if we if time remaining is zero, so if we had a question to answer and we've hit zero, we're going to grab a new question equals data dot uh, game dot questions dot pop. So we grab a new question. Um, if there isn't a question, console.log game over. So that's that's end of the game. Like we, we've run out of question to ask. We'll do something more intelligent with that in a little bit, but that's just gonna be you know, kind of our easy end step. Um, so we're gonna set, but if uh, uh, else we're going to uh, set time remaining back up to 30. We're going to set the question to the question. We're going to set the answer to an empty string. Yeah, okay, cool. Else, if there, um, uh, yeah, so else if we hit zero, uh, wait, is that right? Uh, yeah, set time remaining to time remaining minus one. So this is like if if we've asked a, if we've got a question we haven't hit zero, uh, and that's why the trick is of like you click the the button and it's going to trigger off a zero um, set. So um, this is the, and that's the countdown piece there. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, um, it's going to be easiest if we just fire this up in the browser and have a look. Um, boop -a -doo -doo -doo. Oh, app.tsx. We never imported that. Import. Fantastic. That should fix it. Uh, we'll do npm start again here. Uh, when we're about the ignored stuff. Um, answer. Do, 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 do. Yeah, okay. So we um, it's telling me we haven't used the answer that we update. That's because we're not actually saving um, the answer when uh, we hit time out. Um, we'll come back to actually saving the answers shortly. Uh, do, 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 React app. Okay. Okay, so we need to start a new game. I'll join the game. Oops. Is that up and running? Oh, sorry. I, I was too quick on the punch. Oops. The Azure functions hadn't actually started yet. All right, start a new game. All righty, gonna join the game. No game found. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> uh, I wonder what we sent. Let's have a look here. And ID, oh, we didn't provide a variable. Well, that would be precisely the problem. Hmm, do 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 do. Variables there, params there. Um, bum, 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 bum. That's what I call. I called it ID. Yeah, game play. Oh wait. Oh, hang on a sec. No, that's a uh, data create game. Um, no, it was loading that. Was it? Okay, let's try this again. No game found. No game found. Okay. Um, hmm. So look, we provided that. Did something happen that train? Um, let's go to the GraphQL endpoint. Actually, let's go just copy that. Um, games. Oh, no, the game vanished. Well. I, I must have done something that triggered off a, uh, a restart of the server. Oh well. Start a new game, we'll join it. There we go. Hey, look at that. So let's go. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, oh, we should probably do something about those quotes. I can't. Uh, oh, I have no idea on that one. Uh, Oh, number one in 2013. 
I'm gonna do that. Um, what is the layer for? Jesus, these are properly hard. I'm just gonna click because I, 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 I want to hit through to the end um, of it and just see the like what happens when we hit the end. Boom. Boom. Hey, look, there we go. So we've hit the end. Game over, game over, game over. Because <laughs> the interval's still ticking. <laughs> oh, fun. Um, okay, cool. Well, so there's a there's some opportunities to improve our game. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's just jump back. And now, now we should probably should do something when you uh, run out of questions and the game's over and all that sort of stuff. Um, all right, so... Well, I mean, I suppose we probably should actually submit these answers so we can track them. So for that, we're going to need another mutation. Uh, submit answer, and this is going to take game ID, colon ID, uh, player ID, yeah, ID, um, question ID, and answer, which is just a string because we're a little lazy. Oops, not that. And that, what should we return there? Hmm. What was I returning before? Yeah, we'll just return the player. So we never return the player, so yeah, we can look at their um, past answers or, and stuff like that. Um, I, I could use like a, a fragment in GraphQL where you, where you define a, a subset of a return type that you're allowed to access, but I'm just gonna use a full object here because it's easy enough. Uh, and let's do submit answer with nothing, quiz, uh, game ID, uh, player ID, um, question ID, and answer. Okay, so we'll start with boom, start with that, and we'll change that to game ID. Now, um, yeah, uh, so we go const player, 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 come on, equals game.players.find p, p.id equals player id, uh, if not player, so like, you know, you just your standard error checking. This is not all that exciting, I don't think. Well, it, Validation error, no player. Um, so I'm just going to be lazy with the error messages. And then we can't question equals player dot question. No. Um, the, uh, what is it? It's game dot questions dot find q q dot id question id. Um, and I'm just I'm too lazy to validation check that. Uh, so. And then we go player.answers.push. Now, what are the properties that we have on here? We need the answer, which is that, and we need the question. Ah, well, that was easy. And return player. Well, uh, that, I wonder if that works. Let's find out. Uh, Okay, cool. Uh, oh, now we've got to actually call that. That's a good point. Um, play game. Uh, so let's just chuck a new hook in here. Use effect. So if the time is zero and there was an answer, yeah, if time remaining, time, time, uh, Remaining is zero. Actually, I don't care whether there's an answer because we're just submitting, like, even if there is an answer, we're submitting that. Ah, uh, but, and there was a question. That's that's better. Yeah, because we're going to need the question. Um, uh, we're going to need to call this mutation. So let's go and create uh, that mutation. Const submit answer because GQL mutation submit answer which will take 
game ID is an ID. Oops. Uh, doubles on that. Where's my cursor? And um, player ID, colon ID. Uh, question ID, colon ID, and answer as a string. And I'm gonna make that nullable because if you don't answer a question, well, you're not gonna get anything back. Uh, I was submit answer, uh, game ID, dollars game ID. Player ID, does play player ID, question ID, it becomes dollars, and I've got the dollars on that one. Dollars question ID, and lastly is answer, answer. Okay, and uh, I don't think I actually care about anything that comes back from this, do I? Um, no, so I'm just gonna just ID just like you know, no up on that sort of stuff. Um, okay, so if there was time remaining and oh, I haven't set up the hook that we're gonna to need to use the mutation, const uh, answer question. Um, this time I don't answer a bit answer. Yeah, let's use mutation. So I'm actually not caring about any of the um, like the, the loading stage and the data that's coming back or anything like that. I'm just going to ignore all, all of it. So that will make things a little bit easier there. Um, yep, cool. Use mutation, ah, add that to our import statement, sweet. So now we're going to submit answer. Yeah, like you could make it so it's like you wait until the submit answer completes before you show the next question, but um, yeah, error handling and, and like faster, like we'll just do st like pretend that it's all going to work. It's nothing like demos uh, application where you're just like, hey, just pretend stuff works. Uh, I'm gonna need the player ID out of my um, parameters though. Player ID, let's just check on app to make sure I called it player ID, I did, sweet. Submit answer, it's gonna be variables, ah, variables, oh, the playground running, no. No, I don't need that running though. All right. Hmm. Killing that server again. Things seem to be, it's seeming to start to buffer a bit more. That's annoying. Um, so anyway, we got game ID, ID, player ID, question ID, it's gonna be question.id. And then we're going to answer is going to be answer. Ah, oh, don't need that. Do, 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 do. And then we need to pass some of these through. Um, submit ID, play, player ID, question, and answer. And time remaining. Ah, I knew I was going to forget one of them. Okay. Sweet. I think that's, so that's all the variables. It's when the time is zero and, and we, yeah. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's just start the server again. So we haven't used history yet, but that's because we're not doing navigation. All right. Let's go ahead for these functions to start. Okay, everything is up and running. Now, let's start a new game. Oh, I didn't need to reload that. Start a new game. Ready player one. All right, uh, what do I reckon that one is? Submit. Oh, here we go. Got an error back, a four, 400. Network. Okay, so that's that one. Um, let's preview the response. Have a look what we've got back. The variable answer of type string used in, oh, wait. Did I make my query? Uh, yeah, I made that 
that way. Okay, that's fine. I can. So, what I said in in the schema, I defined it as a non-nullable string. But I then, when I created the mutation to call it, it said it was a nullable string. So it looks at it and goes, well, hang on a sec. One of these can't be true. So let's um, fix that up. So yeah, it, it did actually, um, uh, kind of fail. Okay. Yep. So that's errored. Um, because I bumped the server. Uh, okay. Let's join the game. Now, oh, jeez. What sound chip was in the NES? Um, yeah, I'm going to get all of these wrong. What is the f first Bulgarian personal computer? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to like click through. Um, and like anyone that's watching and goes, oh, I know the answer to that. Feel free to answer it because I'll probably I'll get it on a delay and I will have it wrong. Uh, oops, uh, oh, I forgot to give them all the same name. Uh, so I can multi-select. That's going to be a fun error to check out in the response back. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Gold Master. Um, I'm going to say Microsoft. I know that we used to gold master like images before they went out to printing for OS's. Uh, oldest computer by release date. It's going to be the Commodore 64 or the ZX, I think. Um, oh, uh, Heartbleed was the open SSL one. I might get one right. I might get two right. Why is that a hard question? All right. Okay, sweet. We've we've hit the end of the game. Um, the console. Yep, yep. We've hit game over. Let's go to the GraphQL server endpoint and have a look. And let's go to. Uh, yeah, actually, I can just do it off here. Uh, wait, what's the game ID? It's going to be that. Pop that into here player and what else can I do I can do answers answers is going to need answer and then the question and the question is going I'm gonna do correct answer let's just have a look to see um, and I don't care about these two okay let's have a look did I get any answers correct um, no 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 yes no, no, Apple was the first one with the gold master. The TRS-80, huh? Ah. Yay, I got like four correct. I did not do particularly good on that, but okay, cool. Okay, one last thing to do. What happens when we complete the game? We want to show you your scores and all that sort of stuff. So let's commit this, add dash A, git commit dash M. Um, uh, Play the game, play the game, play the game. All right, uh, and then we are going to say, instead of doing game over, we will go history.push. Ah, push? Oh, yeah, because I haven't defined history properly. Uh, all right, thank you for joining. Um, uh, uh, if you pick all four answers, you get... Oh, yeah, I actually should fix that bug as well. Um, uh, I'll yeah I'll push the code up to GitHub um, and uh, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna record this uh, recording this stream so I'll push it over to my YouTube as well so you can miss all the stuff that you uh, yeah um, that you're missing and yes I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna push this live shortly Amy and then you can see how well you do at the game uh, trolling goes both ways uh, game slash complete. Uh, name slash finish slash uh, ID slash player ID. All right, so we'll do that and then we'll return. Um, yeah, yeah, of course, I'm sure, I'm sure you are. Amy. You're, you're so busy, that's why you're watching the stream. Oh, that's right, I was going to do um, do, 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 uh, name equals answer. It's it's name name's the one that we use to. Yeah, cool. That's how we do it. 
Okay, so we're going to do one final route. It is a path to slash game slash game slash finish slash ID slash player ID. And then component equals complete game. Now that, copy that, control, oops, not control shift N, uh, control shift P, new file, dot, uh, control V dot TSX. Go away, XS VS code instance, I do not need you. Uh, import, how many times have I had to write this today? React from React, const complete game, react.fc, boom, return, div h1, game over man, game over, and return, oh, export defaults, complete game, and then we'll fix that so it says return, not whatever I wrote, Ta-da! That's not how you spell complete game. Did I spell complete game wrong in every... I, I did. Oh, nice. Uh, complete game. And then we'll go chuck an extra E and chuck an extra E. And then app.tsx is, uh, is not done there. Uh, import. Ta-da! One more route to go. Now, ooh, yeah, we're, we... So, I did, I, I have something a little bit different in the way that I was doing the, um, like the um, results query. So we might actually, like, rather than just, like, querying the game and stuff like that, I might make a new type here. So, um, so we're going to get... Uh, player results because we want to see our results we we don't probably want to see the results for everyone else um so we're going to need the game id and the uh which will be an id and the player id which will be an id and then we're going to return a player results result array and then let's create our new type um type player result uh, we'll have the name, which is a string. So that's the player name. Uh, we will have the question. So this is going to be like we get one result per um, uh, per question. Actually, do I need player? Uh, I'll put player there anyway. Um, so it's like one result per question. So that will be uh, just a string. So just the question. Then we go um, correct uh, the submitted answer, which will be a string. The cor correct answer, colon string, and then answers, which will be a string array, and then finally, was it uh, was it correct? And that can be a boolean. Uh, yeah, um, and boolean doesn't have to be um, null or not null because well, a boolean only has two states. That's why we don't use enums. I'm just busy tying up my shoelace here. Cause I keep stepping on it um, on my standing desk. I thing I want to do is like face plant straight into my keyboard and that's going to you know, end badly. I've already got a you know, bandaid on my head. I don't need to add any more. Um, okay. So now we need to implement. First off, we're going to implement that type. Uh, yep. That one. So export type uh, player result equals so name string uh, question string submitted answer string oh, string correct answer uh, answers as a string array and then correct colon boolean all right done done close that one We're back to our resolvers and then we need to do our resolver get uh, do, 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 do. Um, 
start game. No, that's the wait. wait that's the mutations. Let's just collapse these guys. I'm getting confused. Uh, there we go. Player result results. That's why I called it right. Uh, player results, which will be underscore play uh, game ID and player ID. Doesn't need to be in the same order, but I just prefer uh, player result array. And then game, um, ta da. Oops. Ah, what am I doing? Save. There we go. Um, okay, that will be game ID. And we're going to do const play, player equals uh, game players dot find. P, P dot ID equals player ID. Uh, bugger error checking, can't be bothered. If you got this far in the, uh, uh, like in hacking the API and you're like you're trying to get back a player that doesn't exist, oh well, too bad, so sad. Um, you, you deserve to end up with a broken response. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to go through uh, return player dot answers dot map. And so, oh, um, then we're going to return answer, correct answer, which will be, uh, which is answer dot question dot correct answer. And then we're going to go question, which will be answer dot question dot question uh, name which can be player dot player dot name and then answers uh, answers con uh, answer dot question dot answer wait what ah answer S W E R yeah. Answer. Seriously, have I written an? Yeah, whatever. Uh, did I call it answer or not? Oh, come back and look at that. And correct colon. Uh, answer dot question dot correct equals answer dot answer. All right. Uh, what have I got wrong? Um. Is not assignable to answer answer. Ah, wait. Um, yeah. Call it answer dot answer. That's what I wanted. Now I'm still got something wrong in my types. Um, string 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 array boolean. It's not assignable to player results array. Ah, uh, because that, yeah, um, as player result. So this is where like uh, creating a type might be a little bit easier. Um, how to, uh, I think just assigning it to a local variable might be the simpler one or, hmm, let's have a look. What did I do? Um, ah, no, it's because it's, it's submitted answer. Not quite. Ah, oh, damn it. Let's have a look. What did I define my type? Control P types. Name, question, submitted, correct. Ah, oh, it should be answers. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. Okay. No, that was just like, because I had the types broken, um, the IntelliSense was, oh, so the, the, the type checking was actually working. Uh, it's annoying when it does that. Like, you know, stop doing what you meant to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, cool. So that's that. And we're going to go to completed game. All right, so we're going to need to import our usual things. Uh, we're going to use query. Uh, uh, sorry, no. Um, use param from react router dom. Uh, we're going to import gql from graph uh, graphql tag 
Um, and then we will Im uh, do Im use query in a moment. Const uh, player results equals GQL double back tick. Uh, query player results dollars game ID, colon ID, and player ID as ID. Then we want um, player results, game ID of dollars game ID, and player ID, which is player ID. And because this is going to return array, we do we want, um, might just show the, an the question, the answer, and then highlight whether or not you got it correct. Uh, so we will go get the correct question and answers. Yeah, yeah, that's all we, we need. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that'll that'll do for the UI. I don't want anything too complex. Um, okay, so we're going to do const ID comma player ID. Let's use params const. Um, uh, what is it? Is it get query data and get query? Um, or do, 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 do. yeah, when I when I do a, a get, yeah, it's an object loading and data, which is going to be use query on. Uh, our player results when we'll take in variable, which will have uh, game ID, colon ID, and player ID. Okay, and then, yeah, I don't think we're gonna actually have any effects on this one because we'll just go and, yeah, we'll, we'll just work straight off the data object. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, if it's loading, we will return H1 waiting for your answers. Cool, and then if we have answers, if loading and not data, just so it doesn't treat it as a potentially nullable object. Uh, not that it will because it's untyped. Because um, I'm not doing type safety of the responses back from the queries, we could do that. Um, query does have a uh, like does allow generics, um, but I'm yeah sort of slack uh, in doing that at the moment. Now we're going to go data dot player results dot map result boom. And then this is going to return a div, all the divs, div, um, why is it squealing on result? Because I'm not using it yet. Yeah, cool. Um, and then we'll do h2, which will be result.question. And we'll just do, we'll do our unordered list again. And then we'll do do, 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 do. result result dot answers um do, 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 do. yeah dot map oh actually I'm gonna grab the correct answer as well uh, and yeah let's grab the submitted answer and uh, do, 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 do. answer uh, a I just prefer to do returns like this. I don't I don't like the like crazy inline stuff that people tend to do. Uh, li key is going to be a k and then we're going to let's just put a yeah. Um and then here we're going to go correct if it's correct, we're going to put a emoji green tick. If it's wrong, we're going to do emoji red cross. Oops, that. Um, 
<laughs> I should put those in quotes, shouldn't I? And just like just randomly throw out some like you know Unicode uh, results dot correct. I just throw out some like random Unicode characters um, here and there. Um, yeah, uh, I don't care if it's implicitly typed as any. It can be implicitly typed as any. Is that gonna like stop me compiling? I don't think it is. Is it not? Um, ah, I have to like not have that work there. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, ooh, doesn't like a parenthesis there? No. It just, duh, 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 GraphQL syntax. I have a, oh, I have an Erinus circle something like that. No, no, that should be fine. Um, query GraphQL, do, 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 do. Yeah, that's all fine. Uh, Collins. Um, yeah, wait, where's it? Where is it thinking that I've got an error there? I love minified code for this. Yeah. I'm gonna turn off um, implicit any's. Uh, first type from parameter usage. Yeah, that's totally not gonna help. Oh well. Because why not? Um, like this is where you probably want to do something more intelligent about the types that are getting returning and mapping them into correct types and and whatnot. But I am I am not going to do that today because I want to get this thing actually deployed. Um, what did I do last time though for it? Um, yeah. No. I th oh, actually no. I can't use it. Duh, I can actually use the types. That's going to be a. Um, player result and if I go because I can go import player result from dot dot slash API slash types ha huh. graph ql slash types yeah look at that I completely forgot that, I, like, of course you can reduce types across um, the, the client and the server. Ah, you know, isomorphic JavaScript or something like that. No, no, but, but at least, because, yeah, because it's, yeah, that's, how did I not think to do that before now? Ah, oh, so dumb. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, and then I'm just going to, uh, let's go, A equals... Result dot, uh, um, yeah, let's do that uh, and squiggles, yeah, results dot submitted answer, and we're gonna go uh, so your answer, yep, and. Uh, yeah, let's also just go a equals result dot correct answer and correct answer. So you can you can actually see things, you know, like when when you're dumb like me and don't know the correct answer, you will actually be able to see them in the result uh, that gets output. Yeah, I think that should work. Uh, do I have my service still running? I do. Do I have my websites still running? I do. It just doesn't like something in some syntax somewhere. Where? Query player results. To unexpected name found. Bracket. Have I just got to that point in the stream where my brain has stopped working? I mean, it's possible. Someone's going to make a comment about, did your brain ever work? Aren't they? Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, so we can f ah, yep, I found it. It is because I put a dollars there instead of an exclamation point. Huzzah! Okay, we're gonna start a new game. Aaron is gonna join the game. We are going to run through a bunch of answers. 
Yay, it doesn't... Let, uh, oh, oh, come on. I think it's, uh, I'm going to go with IRC, just because it's obscure. Um, I'm just going to keep clicking through answers. I'm not actually... Ooh, no, I'm going to submit the ones that correct that I know are going to be correct. Otherwise, I'm just going to click randomly. Uh, that one I could have got correct. Oh, sad. Boom! Player results is undefined. Wonder why that is. Network. So the last GraphQL query I said, cannot return null from under... Uh, oh, interesting. One of the answers was undefined. Uh, hmm. Cannot return null from non-null field player.answers. A player result.answers. I wonder why that's non... Cannot return null from a non-null field. That means that there's probably something broken in our data model. Um, game. Well, that's going to be a real pain in the backside to try and debug. Uh, so let's just see. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. So let's. Okay. Let's go back to. Let's have a look at where, like, what we have for the player. It's going to be that game. Okay. Now, do we have any... No, all the answers are there. Um, game. Let's just go questions. Oops. And then answers. They should all be non-null. Yeah. So all of those are not null. So what does it think's not null? Let's have a look at the server implementation again then. Um, resolver. So this, so it doesn't like that. Question dot answer. Is that is that right? I don't, I don't feel like that's right. No, it's not. Answer, correct answer. Really? Ah. Push game. Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, I broke my TypeScript model. Um, question, where's question? Damn it. Now I'm gonna have to start again. We're gonna have to fail again at a quiz. So I had, I had the type definitions. Um, it was called answer there, but it like, but uh, yeah, I gotta fix that. Um, but here I designed it to a property called answer, which meant that this was returning an anonymous, like, like an incorrect type. Um, so that's actually not making a. Ooh, so I might have something wrong. That's not actually making a game properly. So. Type, Q, U, E, S, question, correct answer. Uh, oh, welcome. Thanks for signing in from Mexico. You're probably the most remote person I've got today. Um, that's exciting. Questions. Do, 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 do. Um, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. So game has players, questions. So, and, so ID, state, players, and questions. ID, state, players, and questions. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna have a look at my original implementation. So, oh no, that doesn't, yeah. It should detect as a game. And questions is mapping poorly. Yeah. Que yeah, that's all right. Uh, let's, let's try again. Um, start a new game. I think it might just be the TypeScript type system isn't understanding some of it. <laughs> uh, no, Amy, you are still... Oh, geez, that, um, I think that I probably need to do some uh, uh, escaping of characters there because that one was really hard to read. And then we're just going to click through... Oh, no, I think that one's transport. Um, 
Yeah, Heartbleed. Yeah, I can get that one right. Uh, no, 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 I shouldn't get HTTP wrong. Uh, click. Boom. Oh, yes, yes, we got correct answers. And not correct answers and all that sort of stuff. Let's close off the dev tools. Wow. I got a lot of them correct. I had better success just randomly clicking than I had actually answering the questions. That is so disappointing. So disappointing. Oh, but I'm excited. Like we've actually built the application and it worked on my machine. So now I'm just gonna dockerize and distribute it to production because that's like, if it works on my machine, um, my machine is now the production environment. Uh, but I'm gonna turn off some of these servers. Git add dash a, git commit. Doing the end state of the, of, of, of uh, the game. And let's push that. Yeah, I'm excited. So this will go up on GitHub. Um, because now I want to do the thing that I'd actually been hoping to do at some point in the stream. Uh, and that is, whoops, open up GitHub, be you. See, this is this is the, the cool thing you do with that um, URL view. Bang, select that, fires it straight to the browser. Hooray. So this is the, the endpoint, um, uh, sorry, the, the URL on GitHub if you want to have a look. I'll pop that into chat. Uh, oops, I'm in, not selected in the right spot. There we go. Paste that into clipboard. Um, oh, and if anyone's wondering, that thing that I was just doing, that's um, that's clipboard history. Um, so in Win 10, um, Windows V will bring up clipboard history, and this is all the stuff that um, that I have in there. So it's really useful, like for um, for just going back uh, and adding stuff that you um, might have not have done before. Anyway, we are going to go to the Microsoft, um, uh, the Azure portal, because I want to deploy this to Azure static apps and see if it does actually work. So I'm going to sign into the portal um, using, I'm just going to put this under my uh, work account, um, but I'm. Uh, this is not using any preview bits or anything like that. Uh, so we're going to create a new static web app. So if you, uh, so this is a new product that we launched at Build. So it's in preview. Um, it's called Azure Static Web Apps. Um, I'll, I'll track some links um, into the uh, into the stream. Actually, uh, the, you can learn more about it. But the the best place to go is uh, to aka.ms/swadocs. Swa docs. So we'll pop this one into the chat. Uh, if I can find the chat again, pop that in. Um, and that'll take you straight through to the docs page uh, for all of this. But we're gonna create a new one and uh, call create a resource group for this to live in. Um, as are static web apps, trivia, trivia app. Um, uh, Trijam stack is just uh, um, some other uh, AKMS links that I've got around um, just to uh, short link me through to um, certain parts of our documentation. Um, like we we have probably thousands of AKA.MS links um, within the company. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give this a name. We'll call this uh, Twitch Stream Trivia App. Um, so because this is still in preview, we don't have all regions. Available. I'm going to try the East Asia region, um, but it is worth it. This is the region that your the the functions backend gets deployed into, not um, necessarily the, like the web component of that. That actually gets um, distributed globally uh, in kind of like a CDN, but not using. Um, it's not a full CDN. Like we don't have all the features of a CDN. Um, but so the the web endpoints will be hit by the closest geolocation um, to your users. Uh, and then I've signed into GitHub because this uses GitHub Actions to do the deployment. So um, I need to then find Azure Static Web Apps Trivia App. Here it is. And I'm going to just run off the master branch because we just commit straight to master. Um, build location is there. Uh, create React App goes to Dist, I think it is. Ooh. Is it? Um, do I have that? I should do this off the top of my head. Uh, go there, npm build. It's just uh, npm run build. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure this goes to the to like a, to dist as the folder. Uh, I could be wrong. It could be build. 
create a financial build. Yeah, it doesn't tell me where it goes out to. Let's have a look at something. Ah, it is build. Well, that was a good thing I didn't stuff that up. Um, and we go review and create. Create that. All right, so this is setting all the stuff up in Azure. But the other thing that's going to do, and the reason I like signing into GitHub and stuff like that, is that it's setting up um, a GitHub Actions for me using the information that I put on that second screen. So the, the root folder, so that's where the web application lives. It lives at the root of the repository, uh, where it outputs to, and what's the name of the API folder. So that's all going to get spun up here. Uh, we'll just give a refresh. There we go. Um, see that there's been a new commit that's come from... Um, Azure Static Web Apps. So if we have a look into github.workflows or .github.workflows. So this is a GitHub action that was um, scaled, uh, so it scaffolded up for me. I mean, if you haven't used GitHub actions, this is like a super simple way to get one built that, that kind of does the sorts of things you'd be expecting for a GitHub action. Um, we've got some uh, triggers defined at the top. So it's going to trigger on pushes to master or pull requests to... Um, to the master branch and particular types of pull requests, so open, closed, reopened, and uh, synchronized. I think those are the only four things that we can do with pull requests. Um, yeah. Anyway, and then we've got two jobs to find, a build and deploy job and a closed pull request job. Now, the reason there's a closed pull request job is that if you're using static web apps with pull requests um, enabled, uh, when someone does a PR into um, the repo, it will actually stand up a uh, like a staging version of your application for you, so you can have a look what it, like what the changes that are incoming and actually see them running without having to go through and um, like clone it locally and all that kind of stuff that you would normally do. Um, but I'm not going to do a pull request at the moment. The build and deploy job it just looks like if it's a, a push or a pull request that wasn't closed, um, it's going to pull out pull down all the repository code um, out of this git repo it's then going to run a build and deploy uh, so it, it will look for things like um, npm build um, and i think you can override them you know, probably have a look at the docs the um this file uh, this docs here um aka.ms slash swa workflow config um yeah so um so that'll uh, that'll tell you all the configuration stuff, but you'll see here that's the app artifact location that I entered in the portal. Um, there's the API. I didn't change that, and I didn't change the API location. So it's going to do the build, like npm install, npm build, etc., uh, and then it will upload it all to Azure Static Web Apps for me. Now, um, uh, who's that? Sorry, uh, yeah, John said that waiting for that to be usable with um, Azure pipelines. Because, uh, yeah, at the moment it is only GitHub Actions that is supporting the preview. Um, there has been a lot of interest in getting Azure pipelines, uh, github.com slash Azure slash static web apps issues. So there's a, no, oh, that's right. We changed uh, how we do our open source stuff. Uh, and I've got to re-authenticate every machine now. Okay. Um, so if you pop over to here, github.com slash Azure slash static web apps, uh, this is the like this is the backlog or the the, um, the issues and stuff that are being raised by people. Um, you know, these are the features people want, and I believe there is one in here for Azure. Yeah, uh, and I think it's the most popular, uh, like the most commented on one. Like it's got twenty four votes. So yeah, um, follow along on this one in particular to make sure that you keep up to date when this sort of stuff becomes available. Um, to Azure uh, Static Web Apps to, to use the Azure pipelines. Okay, um, resources deployed in Azure. It's still running um, over here. You, know, you can check out the, the logs that are running. We'll see that oh, it's in the process of uploading. Um, but let's just have a look in the portal, the sort of stuff that we've got. Um, it, it's still preview, so not all features that you might expect um, are there, but that's going to be the URL of our application. We'll pop that open. Ooh, it has deployed. Excellent. Um, we get the link through to the GitHub Actions. There's the workflow file. Um, because I'm using Azure Functions, um, I could set up some configuration environments um, variables here. And if I had multiple environments, so like uh, if I've got um, a staging environment open because of a pull request, I can create different variables for different environments. 
Um, I can set a custom domain on this, so like you can deploy a website there, custom domain. I, Amy's done that um, on her Twitch stream with the Quokkabot application that she's been building. Uh, I can see functions. Uh, give it, it'll give a moment. So there's the GraphQL function um, that's been deployed. And if I had like other environments and I was adding more functions, I could see them there. Um, there's only one environment, and then some like the the standard stuff in Azure like role management, locks, etc. But let's see if the game works live in production. So we're going to click start new game. Woo! Aaron can join the game. Yeah, look at that. And now we'll click through and we'll see how many of the questions I do get correct. Oh, and Amy has done a blog post around um, moving her Quokkabot application to static web apps. So excellent. Um, Apple was the first one doing that. Um, yeah, uh, I'd say definitely check out Amy's blog as well. Um, because yeah, she's detailed a bunch of the things that she's come across and some of the challenges that she hit along the way. Uh, no, it was Micronesia. Oh, uh, Bash was shell shock. Dances awkwardly that you can't see on camera because uh, it's there. But ta-da, it is deployed. We can run a game. Um, like obviously the the games aren't going to stay in memory all that long because the Azure functions will eventually spin down. Uh, and then that would be where you, like, you want an actual properly persistent backend, like you know, Cosmos free tier or like a SQL server or anything like that. But I'm excited. We actually managed to build that. It only took three hours um, of me like actually talking through. Uh, like I'm actually pretty stoked at how smoothly that went. Yeah, cool. And we can go back and we can have a look at our static web apps output and if we, we look here, that's like all the logs. It'll tell you what's happened, like npm installs done. Uh, if you are using Yarn, someone talked about Yarn early on in the stream. It will um, uh, uh, it will detect that you're using Yarn uh, and use Yarn for your install. So that, like do a Yarn install instead of a um, an npm install uh, to get all your dependencies. So yeah, it's I, I I'm super excited as it, like this platform. Uh, it's like this is something I've been wanting out of Azure for so long. I've done so many static sites and they've just been so complex because we didn't have like a, like a good, simple static site offering um, like this. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty good. Oh yes, um, yeah, Amy uses Yarn on the stuff that she's done with static web apps. So yeah, it's, it's been there, but awesome. I'm glad that worked. I'm glad that I only stuffed up like two or three things along the way as well, uh, except for the fact that I got a whole lot of questions wrong. But even then, like I just randomly click through and I think that's close to 50%. Yeah. Sweet, all right, well, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> I forgot to have lunch before doing this and I, I probably need something to eat. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that worked. I think it went pretty smoothly. Um, I'm glad to see that some people did stick around for pretty much the, the whole time. I mean, kudos to you. You're like ambitious to spend three hours listening to me. I'm not sure I wanted to do that. Um, but yeah, fantastic. I'm no, I'm I'm just I'm just chuffed with myself. Uh, I might wrap this up surely. Um, if anyone's got any questions quickly, um, I will answer them. Um, so I I'm gonna publish this across to YouTube as well um, and uh, also do a bit uh, do a follow-up blog post um, but yeah like yeah the, the git repo is open if you want to have a look in and play um, yeah it'll be on YouTube for all the time uh, yeah oh I'm I'm just background noise yeah thanks Amy um, just wait till you do your next stream like I was nice to you last time I even fixed the problems that you came across Um. Okay, so so yeah, to your question there, John, about if you wanted the front end in one project and the, the APIs in another, um, sorry, front end in one repo and the API in another repo. Um, so that's not a scenario that we're targeting, at least not at the moment with um, static web apps. There might be an issue in the GitHub issue register. If not, I mean, feel free to add one. But really the, the idea around this is um, that like, those kinds of applications where you, you are building everything together. Um, I, I, the the idea of like mono repo, uh, we don't have a full support for that. So like if you wanted to have multiple different APIs that you were deploying, you can't do that easily. Um, uh, but but yeah. Um, the, so 
so if you're wanting to work with like a, a node backend, the, the APIs are node. Um, so it spins up a node Azure functions. So the um, it's intended to be full serverless. It, so you're not going to run like an app service web server with a node backend. Um, you will only run them as Azure functions. Uh, and the reason is it's, it's intended for that very much a serverless model. Um, there's other stuff I haven't touched on here, like authentication, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, like if you, if you wanted a more complex web server that you could um, like with you know, like, like actual servers, um, then this is probably not the right um, product for you. You could still use it for just the web UI, but then you would have to put the, the server, um, like the, the backend server elsewhere and then do a bunch of stuff to like, you know, maybe uh, like an, a, a um, a firewall or um, something like that in front of it to, to do routing or yeah it would just that would that is not the scenario that's being targeted at least not yet yeah well um, thanks for joining uh, everyone um, from all around the world and remote locations such as Perth <laughs> um, I, th I think it is I think it is time to wrap it up it's been been a long day but yeah yeah uh, could you use Azure Functions as a proxy? Do you mean like the Azure Functions proxy feature? Um, no, uh, so no, uh, the Azure Functions proxies are not exposed through static web apps, uh, at least not to my understanding. Again, if it's something that you think could be useful, um, pop that in the issue register. But yeah, it's it, this is really targeted around, you want like a, a full serverless um, API and front end um, and very much that sort of stuff. Not the, not what what I would call you like your traditional web applications where yeah you've got these like a, a a server farm behind it and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm I'm getting hungry. Um. But yeah, I, I I'm hoping to do. Uh, I've got a more complex application I'm building that I want to do this, but that'll probably take multiple streams um, and I'll, I'll pop up when that's there and uh, yeah I've, I'll, I'll pop up uh, other streams that are, are going to do that I think could be fun and interesting for people but uh, I might not try and do like a full three hour stream again that that's a that's a long time of people having to listen to me but for now thanks for joining in um, I'll uh, I'm glad it worked I'm glad people enjoyed it and I uh, I Love to hear your feedback on um, static web apps if you do have a chance to play with it and stuff like that. But bye for now.